Good evening, everyone. I hope everybody's having a wonderful evening. I'm doing all right. Still dealing with some allergies, so I apologize for my nasally voice once again in advance. I just thought I would do a special True Crime Sunday live stream. I haven't done one in a while. This is actually the first time I've had time this weekend to uh, get on here and do anything. Uh, I usually do a True Crime After Dark on saturday saturday nights but i had some stuff been having some stuff going on this weekend so anyway just wanted to get on here tonight uh bring you some missing persons as always get caught up on uh some cases uh, that we've been following in the news and if you're new here uh thank you if this is your first time here thank you so much for uh dropping in and visiting with us see some people are popping in thank you guys for being here i'll get to a chat in just a second but if it's your first time here thank you so much for joining in um i cover a uh, true crime obviously missing persons cold cases some true crime in the news and uh more so if that sounds like your cup of tea please consider subscribing uh liking sharing commenting all those things help uh Small channels like mine uh, reach uh, more people. More importantly, it helps all this uh, important information um, that I share about these missing persons and these cold cases to get out to as many people as possible. That is a whole goal of my channel. So please consider subscribing if that sounds like your cup of tea. See, I got some uh, comments popping up here. Arctic Fox True Crime is here. Hey, T, how are you doing? Good to see you here. Always good to have Arctic Fox True Crime here. Please, uh, let me go take down my banner. It's not already down. Anyway, I'm trying to multitask. I'll try not to turn it into a dumpster fire right from the from the get-go. Um, anyway, please go check out Arctic Fox True Crime. He has a wonderful channel. He does excellent work. Um, Covers lots, covers and shares lots of missing, uh, missing and critical missing. Um, so go check out. And I tried to go through his uh, community page and share to my community page all the missing that he shares. So it's always good to have uh, have you here. Miss Miranda Lee is here. And my, oh no, my banner is still up. I might have to go through. There we go. Maybe it's down. Um, now I gotta get Miranda back up. There she is. Hey Miranda, good to have you here. As always, my dear. Good to see you. Michigan Wifey, my OG. Always good to have Michigan Wifey here. Glad you could make it. Glad everybody can make it. Um, everybody that's lurking, that's okay. If you don't want to say hi, that is perfectly fine. Anybody who's watching on replay, welcome. Glad to have you uh watching on replay. There's Michelle C. Hello, my dear. One of my wonderful mods. Thank you for being here. Oh. Hey, Mr. Steve. 
True Crime Way. And Mr. Steve says we'll be in and out for a few. Thank you, sir. Always an honor to have Mr. Steve here. Um, please, if you don't check out any other channels, please check out True Crime Web. Uh, Mr. Steve and Mrs. Steve are wonderful people. Um, truly my inspirations um, for, since I've started my channel. And I, I didn't get to check out Mr. Steve did the members only live earlier. I didn't get to check it out. We were in the middle of a supper and watching some stuff on TV, but I'll definitely go back and watch replay. Um, so thank you, Mr. Steve, for being here. We always love having Mr. Steve here. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, Miranda says just sub to Arctic Fox True Crime, turn on all notifications. You will not be disappointed, Miranda. Arctic is uh, one of the best. There's Mitzi Scott. Hey, Mitzi. Good to have you here. Says, hey, Southern Gal True Crime and everyone. Hello, Mitzi. Always good to have you here, my dear. Yep, exactly. Uh, Michigan Wifey says, Mr. and Mrs. Steve. Absolutely. And all the rest of the family. Baby Steve and Double Alt and Triple Alt and, and the whole gang. Um, they're always in our thoughts and prayers. And, of course, Mr. Steve is uh, always in our thoughts and prayers when he and uh, the team are out uh, helping families work on these cold cases. I think uh, he said he'd be leaving in maybe a couple of weeks. He can, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but he's going to be, during the summer, um, he's going to be staying busy out. Uh, um, like I said, he and his team go out for anybody who's new here, maybe uh, lurking around or watching on replay. Um, Mr. Steve has a team. Uh, they go out and help families. Uh, search for the loved ones, try to get some closure in some cold cases, uh, all free of charge to the family. He could not do it without support um, from the community and support through his uh, nonprofit organization that he has. It is uh, truecrimeweb.com. You can find everything there. You can donate um, to the, the uh, foundation. And just by going to his channel and subscribing, watching his videos. Uh, liking, sharing. Sharing is the most important thing you, you can do with any of our uh, any of our content is share, share, share to get that information out to as many people as possible. All right. Make sure I'm caught up in comments. And tonight, like I said, we're just going to um, get my slideshow and everything to come up. There we go. Oh, and there was a, we're just going to go through some updates on some stuff. Of course, I have uh, lots of missing persons to share. Have some cold cases um, to share with you guys tonight. Um, a lot of stuff to get through. We'll get through as much of it as we can in a couple of hours or so. And if we have anything left over, um, we will save it for um, next weekend, probably Saturday. I'll be able to have a true crime after dark on either Friday or Saturday night. But I wanted to share first. Let me take this down right quick and see if my article came up. Yes, it did. We had, uh, well, hold on. Let me see what I'm doing here. Hold on, guys. Share screen. When I was checking for updates, I found this article that had came out. Let me make sure it's going to share. And I didn't have a, a time to make a slide for it, so I'll just share the screen. But it is a, and this comes from WHIO.com. This is out of uh, Ohio. No, let me get the picture up there. I hate that blue banner thing that's up there because it cuts off the picture. Um, but this is a missing lady. Um, she's been missing since apparently Friday. She's 49 years old. Uh, missing from Ohio. It says the, uh, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right. The Preble, P R E B L E, uh, County Sheriff's Office is investigating a missing person case focused on a 49 year old woman who functions at the level of, of an eight year old, last seen uh, Friday evening. Amy Evans lives on Quaker Trace Road, uh, which it says it's south of US 35 in the Glenwood area, uh, Sheriff Mike Simpson's office said in a statement released Sunday afternoon. Evans is believed to have been picked up near her residence by a male, and I do have a picture of the car, um, by a male in a mid-sized vehicle, according to the sheriff's office, um, whose investigators have been working the case since Friday evening. 
Evans is also believed to have left with uh, with some personal belongings and her cell phone, but she has not had contact with family members since Friday evening. She is a diabetic, uh, functions at the level of an eight-year-old. So if you have any information about Miss Evans or if you have seen her, know her possible whereabouts, uh, please contact the uh, sheriff's office at 937-456-6262. I can get the picture up there where y'all can see it. This, and I don't know if this came from maybe a ring doorbell camera, but this is the uh, car and the possible uh, male individual that possibly she got into this car. So if you're in this area in Ohio, please um, keep an eye out. Uh, critically missing, that said, diabetic. Um, if she doesn't have her insulin with her, unless she has an insulin pump, she's got to have that insulin. Uh, once again, functions at the uh, level of an eight-year-old. So please, anybody in the Ohio area, please keep a lookout. All right, just want to share that quickly and go back over here and see what we got. Get my slideshow put back up here. All right. And her, oh, okay, I got it up. Want to make sure I had my um, big slide, bigger slideshow up on my computer so I could read the uh, writing on the some of these uh, small slides or the small writing on the slides. Uh, first, I wanted to give a shout out to um, Tatum Gray. Actually, Arctic, I found her through Arctic Fox True Crime. He had posted a link to her channel on his community page. I watched a couple of her videos. She does excellent work. Um, very good advocate for the uh, missing. So please do uh, go check out Tatum. You will not be disappointed. Um, She's in it for the right reasons, just like uh, all of us are, are here and all the creators that I watch are. Uh, she does it for the right reasons, and she does an excellent job. So please do check her out. Make sure I'm caught up on comments. Um, I wanted to bring, once again, let me get uh, this on uh, April 18th. And uh, if you're in the Fort Smith uh, or surrounding area of Fort Smith, Arkansas, which is very close to the uh, Oklahoma border, they on the 18th of April, which is a Thursday, they're going to ha have a, a human trafficking seminar. Let me make this a little bit bigger so I can read it. Oh, too big. Um, it's for, from 1 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. April 18th. It says the U.S. Department of Homeland Security Center for uh, Countering a human trafficking's blue campaign, a homeland security investigation, and the UAFS criminal justice department invite you to join our no cost one day symposium about human trafficking. Uh, come learn about this global issue that is happening in our small towns and cities alike. Um, it's going to be at the West Art Church, which is on 900 North Waldron Road in Fort Smith. Uh, it says here from a human trafficking survivor who is uh, being flown in to share her experience. Learn from a panel of human trafficking, trafficking experts from across the country, uh, sharing this unprecedented event for our region. The event is open to the public. Registration is not required to attend, but registration is encouraged for planning purposes. Uh, for more information, you can contact Mary, uh, once again, I hope I'm not gonna butcher this, Mary Wusterwald who's a PhD assistant professor. Um, you can email her at mary.wustewald at uafs.edu. It says on uh, the right there, it says free human, human trafficking event in Fort Smith. Uh, this is a unique opportunity open to the public. Come out and learn the truth about trafficking, trafficking be proactive and learn how you can make a difference in our communities. So I wanted to share that. When I saw this, it reminded me of Arctic Fox as he is a big advocate about making more, bringing more awareness to um, human trafficking. And as he says, it is very real. And a lot of people don't realize just how 
real and predominant it has become unfortunately and uh so if you're in that area in the fort smith area or the surrounding areas um and, and you would like to attend uh, please do get the comments make sure um because they're not popping up on my um For some reason, my comments aren't showing up on StreamYard, so I'll just do them from my phone. Uh, oh, Arcus said he just sent me some breaking news. Um, where did you send it to? If it's if it's anything I have to get to on my phone right now, um, I can't do it because I'm recording or doing everything through my phone. Hmm. Did you send it to my me uh, Facebook Messenger by any chance? Or my email? I will check it uh, most definitely. Um, well, hold on. More comments are popping up. I lost my place. Uh, I don't know why they're not popping up on StreamYard, but once again, StreamYard has been a uh, wonky. Oh man, yeah. Miranda says that um, there's a oh, well, where I can see it says there's a Billy Joel concert on TV also. So I'm multitasking. I was gonna DVR that and I forgot to set it to DVR. I saw that earlier when I was flipping through channels to see what was on tonight. Um, hopefully they will reshow it and I will get to watch it. I like Billy Joel. He actually he and Elton John were supposed to come here a few years ago. Um. And I do like Billy Joel, but I'm a bigger fan of Elton John. And they ended up having to um, postpone and cancel the concert because uh, Billy Joel was sick. So I was kind of kind of irritated because I was like, well, I'll just, I'll pay, you know, we I had our tickets and everything. I'm like, I will I really don't care if Billy Joel is there or not. I just wanted to see Elton John. Um, but anyway, I, I do like some Billy Joel. Oh, my cat just came in. I still haven't taught him to uh, shut the door behind himself. Oh, maybe my comments did finally pull up. On a, on a, StreamYard has been really weird lately. I thought maybe it was just my swamp signal or my country signal I have up here, but I think sometimes it's a, it's just StreamYard being, a, being crazy. Because said Billy Joe was her dad. Billy Joe was her dad's favorite. Yeah, I like New York State. It says New York State of mine makes me cry every time I hear it. He's great. Yeah. Yep. Argus says he loves Piano Man. Yeah, that that's probably that's probably my favorite Billy Joel song. Yep, Arctic would know how think he lives around that area. It says, are we, are, as we here in Arkansas call Fort Smith, uh, Emville. Unfortunately, I think that's the way it's getting uh, around a lot of the. Uh... Okay, Arctic said he sent it to my messenger. Um... Let me. caught up in comments and I may take myself out of the stream for a minute and check my messenger. Let's see what the uh, breaking news is. You have me intrigued. Um, I don't know. Uh, Mitzi wanted to know if the, the uh, human trafficking seminar is going nationwide. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think of where I even, I think it was on the Arkansas Justice Project website. I just found that, that flyer that you see there on the left um, about it being in uh, Fort Smith. So I don't know if it's going to be nationwide or not. I'm hoping so. I mean, because in my opinion, um, it needs to be uh, everywhere. Um, 
Hey, Dandy. There's Dandy. Another one of my wonderful mods. Good to see you, girly. I remember to kind of give you a heads up this time. <laughs> Dandy's always telling me, give me a heads up when you're going to go live. And sometimes I forget. But thank you, Dandy, for being here. Always good to have Dandy here. Hey, Arctic said that uh, he has seen it promoted in several cities. So maybe it's like a traveling uh, thing that they're doing. All right, let me, because Arctic has got me intrigued about this uh, breaking news. Let me take myself out for a minute. Um, hopefully I will be back. Hopefully it won't turn into a dumpster fire. Okay, I'm back, and let me, the breaking news that um, Arctic sent me was apparently some human remains have been found in the search in uh, Texas County um, during the search. Uh, let me go. Uh, during the, uh, for the search for uh, the two miss for Veronica uh, Butler and, or, uh, Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly, let me, I don't know if there's anything on the Google and the Google machine about it yet, but let me search and see what I can, if I can find anything right quick. If my country swamp signal will work. Because I checked, um, it's been a few hours since I've checked on the, um, on the, uh, not seeing anything except for what we've already, um, it must be very, very breaking news if uh, none of none of the uh, news websites have uh, got a hold of it. Some more information in the search engine, maybe it'll bring something up. Not seeing anything on anything on Google yet, which is all I have access to. Um, just whatever the news puts out on uh, Google. But thank you for that, Arctic. I will definitely um, keep an eye on it. Um, oh, Mr. Steve's got. Um, Mr. Steve says yes. It appears they have found a body. They have found. Can't read tonight. It says, yes, it appears they have been found buried on the Cullum property. So that was, and I do have an article that I was going to read, and I do have the um, the mugshots and the press release that was released. But I'm, is the Cullum property, the, um, the neighbors, because I know there are four people arrested, the grandmother and her boyfriend, and then two other neighbors uh, their last name was uh twoley or twoby or something like that um let me see if i can find that slide right quick and we go ahead and then we'll go back to our missing um oh 
All right, there it is. Okay, let me bring up the slide that I have. Make it bigger so, or read the bigger version on my computer. Well, give me a minute. There it is. So there on the screen on the left are the four mug shots. And according to the um, press release, which you guys probably have already seen it, um, four arrested in connection to Texas County disappearance case um, on March 30th, 2024, the Texas County a sheriff's office requested the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation to investigate the suspicious, excuse me, disappearance of 27-year-old Veronica Butler and 39-year-old Jillian Kelly. Uh, their vehicle was found abandoned. We know all that. Um, okay, so Colum was one of the ones that was arrested. So on April 13th, 43-year-old Tad Burt Colum. Um, 50-year-old Tiffany Michelle Adams, 50-year-old Cole Earl Twombly, and 44-year-old Cora Twombly were arrested in Texas and Cimarron counties. All four were moved into Texas County Jail on two counts um, of first-degree homicide, two counts of kidnapping, one count of conspiracy to commit homicide in the first degree. Uh, and I had an article... I'm trying to figure out which one is, on the slide is the um, column. I think it is the top right, maybe. But let me uh, let me see if I can find that article that I was going uh, to read from. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Dandy says. Uh, I don't know if it's going to show on my my swamp signal. Let's do it from here. my phone uh, oh, it's up there yeah dandy said that's sad okay on uh, mr steve says on the boyfriend's property so it'll be the older gentleman on the top left I'm still trying to i'm still trying to get sorted out on who is who i know that the older woman is the grandmother and I believe the one on the top left is her boyfriend or whatever they called her or called him. All right. Um, let me get to that article that I had. It'll come up. That is true. Arthur says mugshots look like only cousins dating profile pics. Yeah, looks like something you would see in a Rob Zombie movie. Reminds me of a, like the Devil's Rejects in a um, House of a Thousand Corpses. Mm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Mr. Steve said the one with the long beard. So that's the Colum, who is the grandmother's boyfriend, and that's where they possibly found the bodies at. All right. All right. Thank you guys, uh, everybody, for Arctic and Mr. Steve for that. I hadn't seen that. Like I said, I haven't checked since this afternoon. Um, this article I had was from the New York Post uh, from what's today? From today, actually, from earlier this afternoon. Uh, just talked about the arrest. It said four people were arrested and charged in connection to the disappearance of two Kansas moms uh, who were last seen driving through the Oklahoma panhandle last month, including the grandmother of one of the women's children, Tad Burt Colum, uh, 43, Tiffany uh, Michelle Adams, 54, Cole Earl uh, Twombly, 50, and Cora Twombly, 44, were taken into custody on Saturday. Are the four suspects of uh, kidnapping and homicide uh, 
taking the lives of Veronica Butler, 27, and Jillian Kelly, 39, before they vanished on March 30th. Uh, the two women were considered acquaintances as Kelly supervised Butler's business with their children. We know all that. They were traveling to Eva, Oklahoma to pick up Butler's children who had been living with their paternal grandfather. Reported missing. As I said, they were all four suspects have been charged with two counts of first degree homicide, two counts of kidnapping, one count of cons conspiracy to commit homicide in the first degree. They were booked into Texas County Jail. Adams is the grandmother of Butler's children, and Colum is her boyfriend. Uh, Cole and Cora Twombly have been in an eight year relationship and are friends with Adams who is the grandmother on Facebook. Uh, several law enforcement agencies were at properties in Cimarron and Texas County on Saturday, including at Adams' home. All right, so that didn't give you any more information that we haven't already uh, talked about on here. Another Rob Zombie fan, Dandy says, love Rob Zombie flicks. Uh, these guys uh, look close, yeah. I started out listening to Rob Zombie, or actually White Zombie, way back in the day. And then when Rob went solo, and, and then he started making his movies. I love, I've seen every one of his movies multiple times. Love him, love him. Love the music, love the movies, everything. And Mr. Steve said there was a news release last hour. Still want to find it. Let me see if I can get something up on the Google machine. Uh, let me take it away on my keyboard here. I apologize, guys. Oh, here, okay, here we go. See if it'll come up. Hopefully it'll come up. This is from KFOR. If it'll come up, I'll uh, share the screen. We'll see what it, oh, it did. All right, let me go back up here. Let me do this. That down so I can see what I'm reading. I can push the right buttons without sending it to a dumpster fire. All right, it says nothing right now. Still loading, apparently. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, OSBI bodies found in Texas County after arrest made in missing mom's cases. The bodies of two people were found in rural, rural Oklahoma Sunday. Just one day after four arrests were made in connection to the two missing Kansas moms. The bodies of two people were found. Uh, Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigations announced Sunday night that they recovered the bodies in rural Texas County. The uh, missing person alert was canceled Saturday by the Oklahoma Highway Patrol for Jillian Kelly and Veronica Butler, Sunday marked 15 days since Jillian Kelly and uh, Veronica went missing. Uh, Ted Colum, Tiffany Adams, Cole Twombly, and Cora Twombly have all been booked on suspicion. Uh, OSBI also now announced that 10 a.m. Monday, so 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, they will be holding a press conference to speak uh, about the investigation. So that is all that that article had. But since that said in this article that they had canceled the, um, what did it say? They canceled the missing persons alert yesterday. So uh, I would assume that meant that um, they found the bodies of Veronica and uh, Julie. 
see if there's any other articles that uh been put up that was the only one that kfor so there will be i will have to uh remember to be up in time to uh, catch the uh, news conference sad news but at least um at least the ladies have been uh, found hopefully allegedly possibly and uh, their families will be able to lay them to rest and uh, start their uh, grieving process and uh, and uh, hopefully justice will come uh, swiftly in this case yeah mitzi uh, says i can't imagine having a mother uh, slash grandmother like that my best friend uh, was my grandma yeah yeah to me um and I was in uh, maybe uh, Mr. Steve's live that he did you know, last night. And he was talking about it. Definitely. You know, I'm not an expert, but uh, the grandmother, just from things that she's alleged to have been said and done. Uh, in my opinion, definite, uh, as, as Mr. Steve said, uh, boil it down to just a, a psychopath, psychopath, narcissist, um, control. Um, in my opinion, she didn't give a darn about those kids. Uh, she just wanted the control. Um, it's just a sad situation all the way around. Horrible situation. And I feel so sorry for the kids. And I don't even know how, how many kids there are and how old they are. It doesn't matter regardless of how old they are. It, it's going to hurt. Um, hey, Mind of Monsters. Hey, Sunshine. How are you doing, dear? Good to see you. Glad you're here. Please go check out Mind of Monsters. She does excellent, excellent work. An excellent advocate. Um, has been for a long time. Advocate for the missing. Um, she does good work. And uh, Sunshine, I've got to watch. I watched part one you did yesterday on that horrible case there down in Florida about the uh, woman that was car was hijacked or she was hijacked apparently to me it sounds like she was targeted and then i saw that you uh were doing a part two today of that and also um the madeline soto memorial so i'm gonna have to get over there and watch that on replay it's always good having uh, miss sunshine here she's one of my favorites also get caught up in comments Yeah, uh, Sunshine said, uh, well, they found them. I was on the road uh, live all day. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know about the update until uh, Arctic um, said that he had sent me uh, something about some breaking news. So thank, uh, thank you, Arctic. Thank you, T, for that. Excellent. Uh, Arctic said, I only knew because uh, BHB, uh, I think I know who you're talking about. I went live, so of course I had to vet the information. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Uh, Arctic says those poor kids are going to need uh, decades of therapy. Absolutely. Hello, Miss Barbara Hall. It's always an honor and a pleasure to have Miss Barbara here. How you doing, Miss Barb? And I do have. Um, I'm a, I don't know if you, I posted it on Timmy's birthday, which was the 10th. I made a little uh, tribute video for his birthday and posted it. Um, I'll try to play it tonight um, for anybody who hasn't seen it since Miss Barb is here. But we're, you're, uh, as always, as you are every day, you're uh, Miss Barb, you and Miss Marion and the whole family are in my thoughts and prayers um, every each and every day. So thank you, Miss Barb, for being here. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Sunshine says yes, prayers for kids in the family. Absolutely. All right, I think I'm caught up in comments. Yeah, get back to her, go back to the beginning of the slideshow. <laughs> oh, I'm not making anybody uh, dizzy with my slides here. Oh, we did this one for anybody coming in late um please check out tatum gray 
uh, once again, um, Arctic uh, brought her to my attention. I saw he had posted her link on the community page. I went and checked out some of her videos. Uh, excellent advocate uh, for the missing, doing it uh, in it for the right reasons. So definitely go check out Miss Tatum. And sorry, I'm just reading comments are popping up. Make sure I don't miss anything. Uh oh. I hope everything's okay. Uh, Sunshine Mind the Monster says my son called uh, Eel. We'll be right back. Uh, thoughts and prayers to you, Sunshine. I hope he's okay. The little, uh, what do they call him, little monster. All right. Let me, since Miss Barb is here, um, take this down and let me find uh, Timmy's video. I will mute out my mic and cam a lot. guys that was just a little uh video that i made up uh not, not a very uh big production fancy production but i just want to do a little bit of something for uh miss barb and miss marion and the rest of the family for timmy's birthday uh, it was on the 10th and i believe miss barbara said he would be uh he's 27 would be 27 so just wanted to share that with you guys in case uh for anybody who hadn't seen it yet as I said, uh, Miss Barb, you and Miss Marion and the whole family are always in uh, my thoughts and prayers. Always sending thoughts, prayers, and good vibes your way. All right. Let me get. All right. We will move on and see. Okay, we did the human trafficking seminar. All right, now we will get to some of our missing. Once again, let me bring up my get back down so I can uh, read the little writing on these. Well, read the small writing. Okay, uh, first we have um, Kaylee Love. She went missing from Hot Springs, Arkansas on April 8th of this year. She is just 15 years old. A white female, five foot two, one hundred and ten pounds, brown hair, brown eyes. She was last seen wearing a gray hoodie, blue jeans, and white shoes. And apparently, um, now I did not, because on um, in some comments from her family on the uh, Morgan Nick Foundation Facebook page, where, where I, 
which is where I got this um, from. They have posted some pictures of a, a male that she uh, supposedly allegedly is with. I didn't want to put his face out there because nothing has been verified officially by police or anybody. But um, they said if she is with this male, that she is, uh, he is very dangerous. He should not be with her or she should not be with him. Um, so let's just, uh, anybody with information, please contact the Hot Springs Police Department at 501-321-6789. Because it sounds like this is, uh, if this is true, if she is allegedly with this uh, male, it is uh, not a good situation. All right, let's see if I can get my slides to work. All right, next we have um, Alfonso McCann. He went missing from Batesville, Arkansas on March 1st of this year. He is just 16 years old. A black male, 5'10", 158 pounds with uh, brown hair and brown eyes. He was last seen in Batesville. So if you have any information regarding Alfonso's uh, whereabouts, possible whereabouts or disappearance, please contact the Independence County Sheriff's Office at 870-793-8838. Right. Next, we have another one from Batesville. This is Anthony Van Zant. He is just 14 years old. Uh, he went missing on uh, March 24th of this year. White male, five foot eight, 130 pounds, with brown hair and blue eyes. He was last seen in the Batesville, uh, Arkansas area. So, if you have any information regarding Anthony's possible whereabouts or disappearance. Uh, please contact, once again, the Independence County Sheriff's Office at 870-793-8838. All right. Uh, and now these next few ones are ones that I went in and uh, need a drink right quick. I'm telling you that's allergies. I've got my, got my throat tore up. These next few are ones that I, I try to go in every day or so and uh, to all the missing persons and cold case Facebook groups that I'm in and uh, snag some of these missing that have been posted in there to feature on uh, whatever next live stream or video that I do. So these are some of the ones that I snagged. Um, on the left, we have Gabriel Thor Crow. He was last seen on January 27th of this year on uh, Starnes, Starnes Cove Road, which is in Asheville, North Carolina. He is uh, 27 years old, a Native American male, says from the East, he's Eastern Band at Cherokee. He has brown hair, black eyes, 5 foot 11, 170 pounds. Uh, you can see there kind of on his neck, he has tattoos, he has a green claw and his skull and crossbones. So if you have any information about Gabriel, great, Gabriel, please contact Lieutenant Welch at 828-250-4503, which is the Buncombe County Sheriff's Department, or you can contact the Cherokee Indian Police Department Investigator Wayne Dover at 828-497-4131. On the right, we have Christina Carrillo. Um, there wasn't a lot of information. On this flyer, it says Christina was last seen June 14th of 2022. So it's been uh, almost two years. Uh, from uh, Shiprock, New Mexico, possibly around the Flowing Water Casino or around Farm Road. Uh, did you talk to her um, or see her during the time frame that she went missing? Do you know who she was hanging out with? Even the smallest detail. Smallest detail uh, means a lot. If you have any information or tips, you can call 505-368-1357 um, or 1350. You can also um, email Four Corners Canine Search and Rescue at gmail.com. All right. Let's see what we got next. Get my slides to advance. 
Um, I think I featured these on the last live stream, maybe whenever I did it, Thursday or Friday. Um, on the right, we have Brittany Sturgill. She is 33 years old. She has red hair, hazel eyes, 5'4", 192 pounds. She is classified as critically missing. The, the uh, Virginia State Police uh, did issue a critically missing adult alert on a behalf of the Newport News of uh, Virginia Police Department for missing 33-year-old female, Brittany Sturgill. She was last seen at around 5 p.m. on Tuesday, April 9th of 2024 on the 1000 block of Willow Green Drive, uh, which is in Newport News, Virginia. She is possibly wearing tan and black shoes blue jeans and a tie-dye shirt over a tan shirt. So anyone with information on uh, Brittany's whereabouts is asked to call the Newport News Police Department at 757-247-2500. On the right, we have Roderick Casey Dura. It does not say on the flyer or this one that I have, but I believe he's been missing since March uh, 20th or 21st, somewhere around there of this year. Um, he his date of birth is 3488. He is a black male, 5'8, 150 pounds, brown eyes, uh, black hair with braids. He does have visible tattoos on both arms of Mickey Mouse, a rose, and music notes. Uh, he was last seen dropped off on Shady Acres Road in Calpians, South Carolina. He was last seen wearing a black sleeveless shirt, uh, green shorts, black slides, dark gray, carrying a dark gray book bag, possibly a jacket. So if you have any information on Roderick's disappearance or his whereabouts, uh, please contact the Spartanburg County Sheriff's Office at 864-503-4300. All right, next we have um, Daryl Arnest Smith. Uh, Daryl went missing from Dunbar, West Virginia on October 2nd, 2014. So this is about uh, almost a 10 year old case. Uh, age at the time he went missing, 46. He would be 56 now. Um, black male, brown eyes with a shaved head. 210 to 220 pounds, 5 foot 11 to 6 foot 1. Last seen wearing a Carhartt coat, light blue jeans, and a, a light colored boots. Uh, I don't think it has a picture of it, but it says he has a large multicolored Grim Reaper tattoo on his upper left arm. Uh, Daryl was last seen in Dunbar, West Virginia on October 2nd, 2014. He had spoken to his employer on the phone that morning. Uh, apparently, he was told that he didn't have to come into work that day. Cell phone records show that he traveled along Interstate 77 from Dunbar to the area of Eden's Fork Road um, in Charleston when he disappeared. And law enforcement, unfortunately, does believe that Daryl is a victim of a homicide. And I don't think, oh, it does. So if you have any information on Daryl's case, please contact the Kanawha County Sheriff's Department at 304-357-0556. All right, next we have, and I can't remember which, uh, like I said, uh, I snagged this from one of, one of the uh, many missing persons cold case groups that I'm in, um, but this is Ashley Linden. And I believe, I don't know uh, who posted it. It came from the Where's Ashley Linden uh, page or group. It says, where are you, beautiful girl? Your family is waiting for you. Um, Ashley Linden is still missing from Tampa, which is in Hills Hillsborough County, Florida. Did you hear something, uh, see something, know something? Uh, if you're not 100% sure, please report it. Uh, yeah, anything, no matter how small. Can't say this enough. I sound like a broken record once again when I say this. Um, and and as uh, Sunshine, if she's back, always says, if you see something, say something. Or if you know something, say something. It could be the smallest thing um, that you think is insignificant, but it might not be. It might be that a uh, missing piece of the puzzle. 
and um, they say we need Ashley home. Her family is not whole without her. And and I believe that uh, those are her three children there pictured on the left. Just breaks my heart. Um, the only phone number that was associated with this is you can call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-873-TIPS or maybe submit it online at a Crime Stoppers uh, TV, uh, dot com. So please, and I believe all these missing um, that I'm sharing here in the first, I did individual posts for them on my community page. Um, so if you don't want to, if you can't share the video out or this live stream out when it's over, um, please go to my community page and you can uh, share all these from there. All right. Next. Uh, we have Brianna Ward. There is now a $2,000 reward being offered for information leading to Brianna's location. Brianna was last seen on February 25th, 2024. I want to make it a little bit bigger. In uh, Williston, uh, North Dakota, she also got goes by B or Bree. She is 27 years old, brown hair or brown eyes, auburn hair, uh, five foot six, 125 pounds. Uh, says the uh, Williston, North Dakota uh, Valley News Live. Apparently, is where this information came from. A two thousand dollar reward is now being offered to anyone who can provide information leading to a uh, twenty seven year old Brianna Ward's disappearance. She has been missing since February twenty fifth, two thousand twenty four. Uh, Brianna was last seen in Williston. She is a five foot six inches tall, one hundred and twenty five pounds, brown hair, auburn hair, brown eyes, auburn hair. Once again, if you have any information, you are asked to contact the Williston Police Department at seven zero one five seven seven one two one two. And I do have, get back over here, a, uh, well, it's not going to let me take it. I do have a video that I found. Um, I can't remember what website. There's a link to it in the description box. Um, it has an interview with Brianna's sister. I believe her name is Chelsea. Um, I have to do it from my phone. So I will play it for you right quick. Um, and I once again will mute my cam and uh, my mic. is Valley News Live at 5. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Courtney Lockie. For the first time tonight, we're hearing from loved ones of a missing Williston woman last seen one month ago. 27-year-old Brianna Ward was reported missing on February 28th. Valley News team's Anna Ball Weber spoke with her family members today who say they're not giving up hope. Where is she? She, does, she doesn't just disappear. Chelsea Francis has been without her sister, Brianna Ward, for about one month now. What seemed like a normal phone call back in February turned out to be one of the last times she's heard Ward's voice. The last time I physically saw her in person was in 2022, um, but I talked to her over the phone through video on February 20th. And just eight days later, she was officially reported missing. With leads quickly drying up and questions still left unanswered, Francis began traveling hours to and from home to work with investigators to search for her sister. The hardest part is just not knowing anything. Um, you hear a lot of speculation and tips that are horrible that you never want to read, you never want to hear in your life. Police say they followed up on several of these tips, but still nothing. Acknowledging her sister's wild and turbulent past, she says that doesn't matter. There's no judgment. If she needed to get away for a little while, that's fine, but she needs to let somebody know she's okay. And absolutely nothing is stopping Chelsea, who proves a sister's bond can never be broken. I am tired. I am exhausted, but I'm not giving up and I never will give up. Tired, exhausted, but also motivated. Somebody has to know something somewhere and we just need them to come forward. 
In Jamestown, North Dakota, Anna Ball Weber, Valley News Live. You can share hashtag Find Brian Award on social media to help. You can find more information about her on our website, valleynewslive.com. And if you have any information on her whereabouts, call Williston Police. All right, that was, uh, oh, goodness. My second self just pooped out of my computer. Uh, so that, that back up there. Get the right layout going. There we go. Let me see if I can get my second self to uh, come back up here. Let me get caught up on comments while uh, we're waiting. Thank you, everybody that is here. Absolutely. Uh, Mitzi says, uh, at Mind the Monsters, I just subscribed to you uh, last week and been replaying your videos. I think you're a wonderful lady. Yes. Uh, Sunshine at Mind of Monsters, uh, she she does excellent work, has been for a long, long time. Like I said earlier, if you ever need uh, any flyers printed up, as she mentioned on the last live stream I watched um, with her, all you have to do is email her. She will get some flyers printed up for you for any case that you want to uh, put flyers up for, and she'll get them mailed out to you. All right. Yep, there is a Monda Monsters link. Thank you, Michelle, for putting that in there for me, dear. Oh. You're welcome, Miss Barbara. Miss Barbara says, so beautiful. Um, thank you so much. It's been a rough week. Bury my stepfather for the day uh, after Timmy's birthday. Yeah, I saw on Facebook that uh, you needed thoughts and prayers for your stepfather. Um, once again, thoughts, prayers, and good vibes to you always, uh, Miss Barbara. To you and Miss Marion and the whole family. Absolutely. I think Michelle and, and everybody here says sending love to you, Miss Barbara. Absolutely. Yep, Mitzi. Thank you guys for uh, always showing so much love and respect to uh, these family members them, that have lost loved ones that, that are, uh, I'm always honored to have them in my chat. Uh, Miss Barbara, Miss Marion, Miss Kimberly Lotz, um, Durante Martin's grandmother has been in. Um, some of my live streams, um, other uh, family members that have lost loved ones, and it's always an honor, um, an honor to have them here. All right, I think I got my second self up going or going here. Let's see if it'll let me. Uh... Hey, Karen Lee, welcome, welcome. You snuck in on me. I'm behind in comments a little bit yet. Thank you for being here, Miss Karen. Absolutely. Uh, Mitzi says it is truly staggering the amount of missing people there are. Absolutely. It's just, I said it, I think uh, maybe Thursday on my live stream, um, all of us uh, creators and the whole community and everybody that shares in the Facebook groups and on all the social media platforms, we could share and share 24-7. And unfortunately, not be able to get all the uh, missing, uh, get their faces out there. But we do the best we can. Get caught up. We'll see what we've got next. Yes, Arctic said that he has covered Ashley on his channel. Yes. I'm telling you, Arctic is a, a video making and, and a posting machine when it comes to uh, getting these missing missing videos, uh, missing flyers posted on his uh, community page. He does A1 work. Welcome, Chris. Good to have you here. Always good to have Chris here. Hello, Dean Johnson. Good to have you here. Welcome, welcome. Caught up in comments. I think I'm caught up for a minute. Make sure I'm caught up on the phone. 
Uh, yeah. Okay. We will see. Let me see if I can get some of this stuff out of the way here. There we go. See what we have um, next. All right. Let me bring up uh, once again. Bring up my so I can read the small writing. Um. And I think this one is from Maryland. This is Lehman Wright. Uh, the Charles County, excuse me for scratching my nose. Once again, allergies. Uh, Charles County Sheriff's detectives are seeking the public's help identifying the suspect or suspects responsible for a homicide that occurred in 2003. Charles County crime solvers and the uh, Charles County Sheriff's Office are offering a combined cash reward of up to $10,000 for information leading to the arrest of the suspect or suspects. On April 7th, 2003, Layman Wright uh, was shot and her life was taken as she was about to enter her townhouse on Hadley Drive in uh, Waldorf. A layman had just returned from dropping her daughter off at daycare and her other child was inside the home when this happened, waiting for her to return. Uh, layman was only 30 years old when uh, she passed away. Anyone with information that could help uh, solve this case is asked to contact uh, Charles County uh, Crime Solvers by calling 1-866-411-TIPS. And all of individuals who provide tips through uh, Crime Solvers will, re will remain anonymous. So this is another one that we need to uh, get Layman's face out there, get her story out there. Uh, 2003, that is, um, what, not, not 10 years. And uh, still no, as far as I know, still no arrest or uh, that I read persons, persons of interest. If anybody else um, has any additional information that happens to be in chat or uh, watching replay. Uh, please do let me know but we need to get uh, another one that we need to get solved or at least get the uh, information out um another one is this is sydney kersey uh, sydney was 39 years old she was found in a heavily wooded area off oak mountain road in shiloh georgia on september 22nd 2019 uh, the case is still under investigation. She has three children and two grandchildren. There is a reward available. Um, if you have any info that can help solve her case, please call the FBI tip line um, at 770-216-3000. And I believe this came from a family member on the right-hand side. Apparently, there are some persons of interest. Um, I'm going to have to look into Sydney's case. Uh, more, but it says the first person of interest was out there searching for you. Second person of interest interest was not out there searching for you, but claimed to love you. Third person of interest allegedly had a search party after you went missing, so they wouldn't look guilty. Um, I promise you, Big CS Sydney Kersey, we won't stop until we get answers and justice for you. Uh, they have gotten away with it right now, but I promise you that they can't get away with it forever. Absolutely. And the more that we keep sharing these, sharing Sydney's face, her story, hopefully somebody will come forward and uh, say something or they can get enough evidence to uh, arrest somebody in Sydney's case. So uh, please, guys, uh, share, share, share. That's my new motto. Share, share, share. All right. Let's see what we got next. Uh, this one is a cold case. It is from, what is it from? Uh, 1985. Uh, this is Sherry Mahan. She went missing on February 22nd, 1985. She was just eight years old when she went missing. She will be 45 years old now, white female, uh, brown hair, hazel eyes. At the time uh, she disappeared, she was four foot two, 68 pounds. She is, went missing from Cabot, Pennsylvania. 
the picture you see there on the right is an age progression to uh, 44 years old. She was last seen. Uh, let me read from the right. Uh, the Pennsylvania State Police Troop D Butler Station continue their search for Sherry Mahan. Eight-year-old Sherry was last seen on February 22nd, 1995, when she exited her school bus on Corn Planter Road, which is in Winfield Township, Butler County, Pennsylvania. Persons who observed Sherry exit the bus reported a blue or green conversion-style van on Corn Planter Road at the time that Sherry exited the bus. The operator of this van has yet to be identified and the uh, Pennsylvania State Police will, would like to question the occupants. Sherry was last seen in a gray jacket, denim blue jean skirt, blue leg warmers, tan ankle boots, and carrying a blue book bag. Uh, Sherry would be 46 years old today. Uh, like I said, the uh, age progression is to 44. Um, if you have any information, I think I cut it off. Um, but you can call a uh, Nick Mac, which I believe is 1-800-THE-LOST, or I'm sure you can call the, um, call 911 or the Pennsylvania, uh, Pennsylvania State Police. So please keep, uh, Sherry's name and face out there. All right. This one is an unidentified female. She was found on April 10th, 2000 in uh, Falls County, Texas. It says it, it has been 24 years. This individual is still unidentified. Someone knows something, please speak up. She was discovered, the remains were discovered on April 10th, 2000 in Falls County, Texas. Estimated age range 18 to 99. Height was estimated um, between four foot nine and five foot three. Um, could not estimate a weight. Uh, you see there, her name is a number is a 3514. Uh, skeletal remains were found in a stock tank on a CR, which I believe is, means County Road 451, approximately four to five miles um, from I-35 in Falls County. Now, she was found with numerous clothing articles, including a long-sleeved, light-colored shirt with ruffles around the neck, a yellow shirt, two light colored polyester scarves, a light brown sweater with USA 1984. I'm assuming on the front of it, a short sleeved pink Jody brand blouse, a black and gray striped skirt with a matching shirt uh, with Chinese symbols on the tag and the number uh, nine. A size four maiden form underwear and several floral sheet sets. So I wanted to include this one. Um, hopefully, the, I don't know if they've done any uh, or the skeletal remains, if they were able to do any, get any DNA do, to do any kind of genetic genealogy to maybe find out if there are any relatives of hers in any of these databases. But I just wanted to include her. Um, along with everything that was found with her, uh, might jog, jog somebody's memory about any of the clothing items um, that were found with her. So hopefully somebody uh, will remember something and uh, say something. All right, we've already went through uh, the missing moms. Um, next, we have uh, Sebastian Rogers is still missing, of course. Um, I do have an article I'm going to read, which I believe um, sums up. Because we, we all know that a lot of people are wanting to, without getting into a big hole, a uh, storm here starting anything some people are wanting to lay blame um without knowing all the facts of what's going on obviously we all know that police have uh, know a lot more than we do um but it's still important what we can do is keep sebastian's name and face out there um but i did find an article that i believe is from three days ago that kind of sums up 
what the police are doing, how they're handling it. And I will read that to you. But first, um, the most important is to uh, put Sebastian's information out there. He is a uh, 15 years old, brown hair, brown eyes, five foot five, 120 pounds. He is uh, Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers of Hendersonville, Tennessee, went missing February 26, 2024. He was last seen near Beach High School on a Stafford court. He was last seen wearing a black sweatshirt and black sweatpants. He is autistic. He likes to hide under things. So TBI is asking residents who live near the search area um, to check out buildings, garages, cars, under decks. Um, in case Sebastian used any of these as hiding places. If you have seen Sebastian or know of his whereabouts, please call the Sumner County Sheriff's Office at 615-451-3838 or the TBI at 1-800-TBI-FIND. There is a National Amber Alert. You can contact uh, your local FBI office, 911 or you can call 865-544-0751. So, let me go back over here and find his article that I had. Hopefully it'll come up and not take long to come up. We're waiting. I'll get caught up in some comments. Oh, Sunshine's back. Good to have you back, Sunshine. Uh, I hope your son, I hope little monster is doing okay. If that's the one that you're referring to, to the son you're referring to. I hope all is well. Yes, Arctic, I did see that. Uh, Arctic said, did you see the missing 14-year-old found after 10 years, Jessica Dugadio? Yes. Actually, I had uh, I found that article. It popped up in my Google News feed. And I um, will probably have a true crime after dark, um, probably Saturday night. And that's one of the cases that I was going to talk about. So, yes, I did see that. You know, I love uh, those cold cases that are, are solved or or especially ones where uh, the missing are found. Chris said it's 21 years. Okay. I don't know which one you're talking about, but I um, apologize if I was off on my, <laughs> off on my math. Um, you know, math is not my strong point. Okay, uh, Chris said it is connected with Olivia Fowler's case. Which case, uh, Chris, are you talking about? Just let me know in comments because I've kind of went through a bunch of uh, the missing ones. Just let me know, Chris, which one is connected. Yep, thank you, uh, Sunshine put in. Um, once again, uh, Sebastian Rogers, all his information says, uh, say his name. He will answer you. Yes. And I was actually, um, what kind of, not that I've forgotten about Sebastian, but kind of jogged my memory or brought him into my mind last night. And um, I don't know if any of you guys watching uh, tonight or, uh, on replay, if you watch, uh, on Patrol Live, it comes on Reels channel on uh, Fridays and Fridays and Saturday nights. Um, it's just a live show. They follow different police departments around uh, the country, um, and actually, and they always feature a, a missing person. And actually, Sebastian was the one they featured last night. And uh, Katie, um, they had her on their live um, talking about Sebastian. So I thought that was uh, pretty neat. Pretty neat. Because aside from, and I, I, you know, I watch um, some national news, but aside from just uh, stuff on uh, Facebook and YouTube, I've really not seen, unfortunately, any, a lot of national news coverage, at least here in Arkansas, about Sebastian's case. Um, 
so I was just uh, thrilled to see that uh, On Patrol Live um, featured him as their missing person last night. I believe it was last night. Last night or Friday night. I believe it was last night. Chris says, I think you should cover the 1974 Fort Worth Trio. Yeah, just uh, either message and messenger me um, the names and the state. Oh, well, the state is obviously Texas if it's Fort Worth. Um, well, I say obviously, but I found out that there's a Fort Worth. Uh, what was it? Wisconsin. I think Thursday night on my live stream, uh, Miss Peggy or somebody that was in here said there was a Fort Worth. Uh, that wasn't in Texas. The only one I've ever heard of is in Texas. Um, <laughs> I love your names you have for your kids, Sunshine. Mini Monster is the oldest. Yes, that's the one uh, that lives in Nashville. Um, and uh, Tater is the youngest. <laughs> that reminds me of, oh, what, what is the comedian's name? Ron White. Uh, his special he did it's, been, it's years old but it's uh, they call me tater salad and they always had it said he had a son named tater tot funny stuff okay uh sunshine says she watched it on twitter are you talking about uh the coverage from on patrol live yes um Arctic says, I was glad to see Katie on a legitimate news outlet and not making uh, the rounds to every grifter on YouTube, like Seth has been doing lately. Yeah. Yep. I agree with you there, buddy. Okay. Sunshine knows who Ron White. I love Ron White. I don't even know if he's still doing stand up anymore. I haven't watched, uh, seen any new specials from him, but I've watched, they call me Tater Salad, I don't know how many times. I just roll every time. All right. I think I am caught up in comments. We will see what we got going next. Um, speaking of remains being found, before we get to, uh, they did find, uh, talk to, I think, the biological mother of London, Devon. But I did find an article. Oh, did I, wait. Did I forget to read an article? Oh, goodness. I got sidetracked. I forgot what uh, article I was going to read. Is it hasn't come up yet? Oh, the Sebastian. Um, all right, let me go back. Sorry, guys. I got ahead of myself. Let's see if it'll load. Sunshine, my swamp signal's not working tonight. It's wonder Dandy hadn't put it in there. My swamp signal's not working. My country signal. Oh, I might have to close out the tab and uh, start all over again. Because I did want to read this article because it made some, uh, in my opinion, some uh, very good points. If it'll come up. <laughs> Arctic <'cause, laughs> says, I don't know if Ron White still has a liver left. If he does, it's likely pickled. Uh, yeah, that's true. That is true. Oh. Every special that I've ever watched, and even stand up, he's uh, he's had a drink in his hand. Hey, Chris said, uh, Sydney. So Olivia's case is connected to Sydney's case. Is that what you're saying? Please correct me if I'm wrong. Sunshine says, I was in the sticks today and my swamp signal was making me turn gray, gray faster than normal. Yeah. All right. Um, this is um, from News Channel 5 Nashville. And it is from April 11th. This says, what would it take um, for the Sebastian Rogers case to become criminal? Because a lot of people have wondered why they haven't made any arrests and blah, blah, blah. Well, evidently, they don't have any evidence right now to um, to arrest anybody. So that's what people are not understanding. They can't just go 
go out on a whim or listen to YouTubers or whoever saying, you know, who have their opinion. Everybody has a right to their opinion, but you have to, uh, you have to follow, uh, you have to do uh, by procedure. Uh, so it says uh, no one is cleared and the focus remains on, on the possibility, possibility of foul play. Nothing so far that they found that says there is foul play involved. The mystery of Sebastian Rogers remains this uh, as the autistic teen is still missing after 46 days. The search continues, but many wonder what would take what would it take to officially open a criminal investigation and perhaps even seek in indictments. As authorities say they won't rule out foul play, but have uh, not said there is a criminal investigation yet in the Sebastian Rogers case. Sebastian disappeared from his Hendersonville home more than six weeks ago. Since then, professionals and volunteers searching for the 15-year-old have found nothing. So how does a teen with autism walk from a home barefoot in the middle of the night with a flashlight and just disappear? Experts say, and I agree, children rarely simply vanish completely on their own, which is true. Um, could others be involved in Sebastian's case? In my opinion, yes. I'm not saying it's any of the parents. Um, you have to consider other, because it did say, even though I believe I read or in some of the interviews that even though Sebastian wasn't supposed to be online uh, playing games, that he might have snuck around and played online, and it's possible, totally within the realm of possibility, in my opinion. That there, uh, he came across a um, a predator or somebody with nefarious intent that um, could have lured him out of the house that night. And we have to keep all avenues open about who could be possibly be involved um, with Sebastian's case. Um, it says we have not cleared anyone, but we have no evidence of foul play. Instead, Eric Craddock, Sumner County Sheriff's Chief Deputy, though they certainly have theories. So, what would it take to call this to now call this a criminal investigation? District Attorney Ray Whitley it says there needs to be something physical evidence, which could be blood, Sebastian's clothing, a flashlight, or security video, or an eyewitness, an eyewitness legitimate implicating someone at this point the simple fact is there is nothing but that's not to say that that can't change and general whitley says he stays in contact with authorities ready to prosecute if it does sumner county ema a director Widener says his crews are all on call ready to go when and if investigators with new leads um, who have new lead, if any new leads come up on potential evidence. Anytime the sheriff or TBI says we need to deploy, we go, we are ready to go. A sophisticated mapping system shows all the ground that they've covered. Sadly, to date, no confirmed sightings and no indication whatsoever of what happened to Sebastian have been found. Authorities still assume that Sebastian is alive. And hope he is found safe. That is what we all are hoping and praying for. But if that is not the case, then his body must be found. Without it or any other physical evidence, we may never learn what happened to the teen. Most importantly, anyone with tips, credible, legitimate tips, on Sebastian Rogers' case is asked to call 1 800 TBI Find. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, brought up very good points, in my opinion. You know, law enforcement, how they can, and if I don't know if Mr. Steve is still here, but he can tell you he is former law enforcement. Um, there is a process you have to go to. You can't just go out well, willy-nilly if you don't have any evidence on anybody, whether it be family members, Somebody who may have lured him out, somebody within the neighborhood or the community, you have to have evidence, you have to have probable cause. So, 
anyway, that is just my two cents on it. Um, but like I said, the most important thing is what you see there on the screen. Sebastian's face, his name, his information. Share that anywhere, everywhere possible. That is the most important thing that we can do. Yes, Arctic, that's what I was going to get to. Arctic says, I read there were remains found connected to the investigation into L uh, London and Blake. Yes. Yep, and I do have, I don't, you said you sent me a link to an article. Um, I, I did find a couple of articles. Um, I don't know which one that you sent me, or I can't even remember which one I'm going to read from, but um, yes, most definitely. Absolutely. Arctic says, as far as Sebastian goes, we have no idea what happened. Absolutely. He could be anywhere and he could be found, unfortunately, years from now. Uh, he says, just look at Alicia Navarro. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. Chris said, uh, sent me that information about the 74 Fort Worth, tri Fort Worth Trio. I will definitely check it out. Thank you, my friend. All right. Now we will. Speaking of uh, before, I almost forgot to read that article about Sebastian. Um, first, I'm going to um, once again find the right article. Well, actually, uh, before we get to that, I had a couple of um, couple of articles. Uh, one on a little bit, little bit of information uh, coming out about Raleigh Strain from his uh, family, and a, a little article on um, Caleb Harris. Uh, let me. See if it'll uh, get the or, or get it loading, and let me see if it'll share it, or let me share the screen if it loads. Yeah, Miss Barb has legitimate concerns. Um, she says I just don't understand some of the actions. Talking about Sebastian, yeah, it's you know it's perfectly fine to have a. I have questions. I have concerns, but like I said, I, you know, I wasn't there. None of us was there. Um, we don't know what happened, but you know, I, I do have questions and concerns all the way around. But I, you know, uh, see if it's going to load. Yes, it did. All right. Now let me see if it will. Sh let me share my screen right quick. It's going to come up. It's taking its sweet time. I'll go ahead and start reading while it's loading. It may come up. It may not. Um, this is from April 12th. And it says, a Raleigh Strain uh, case, family friend reveals huge development in the uh, death investigation uh, this is just coming from the family uh the riley strace riley strain case continues to unfold weeks after the body of the New university of missouri student was found in nashville's cumberland river a family friend chris dingman says they received um uh intel from the alleged last person who spoke to riley before he went missing and according to Chris, who has spoken on behalf of the family uh, several times uh, since Raleigh's body was discovered, the unidentified person also gave a statement to detectives. And I believe it was one of the um, homeless people that they spoke to. Um, that was huge. He told News Nation April 10th of the newfound witness. Uh, that was something we were looking for. He told the, the detective his account of the story and what happened to Riley. However, 
In response to uh, Chris's interview, a spokesperson for the Nashville Police Department uh, tell, told E! News that a person who originally came forward has since recanted their statement. Following detectives' interrogation, the person said that they had not actually seen Riley, but somebody else. And, of course, the uh, case remains open. Uh, Riley, who disappeared on the evening of March 8th during his paternity trip to Nashville, uh, he was found eight miles away. Uh, we know all of that. I'm trying to see if there's any other information. We know about the initial autopsy and then the second autopsy that the family ordered that said uh, he was found without his pants, wallet, or boots, and there was no water in his lungs. Uh, seeing if there's any other. And it says, and while Riley's family, which includes Mother Michelle Whited and stepfather Chris Whited and father Ryan Gilbert and stepmother Millie Gilbert, have not made a pub public statement regarding the development, Chris clarified that the family 100% believes something more uh, than Riley simply following into, falling into the river um, led to his death. Uh, Riley's father also clarified that the family continues to seek answers from his um, son's Delta Chi fraternity brothers about the night Riley went missing. We haven't really heard much from them. Ryan added to uh, News Nation. There's a lot of things we like to find out from them. And I think that was all the um, new information that was in that article. So just uh, the first thing that I've come across that was. Uh, Fairly new um, regarding Raleigh's case. I just wanted to share that. Excellent. Um, uh, Sunshine said, um, I think back up there that she is uh, planning on doing an update live on Raleigh. She's going to do tonight, but she's being uh, understandable, my ma'am. You get some rest, and I will definitely, uh, whenever you do your live, I'll try to be there if I don't have anything going on. If not, I will definitely watch the replay, as always. Eager to hear what you have. All right, let me see. Um, I think I had something on... Uh, Caleb Harris, once again, if I can get the, I can get it to load. There it is. All right, now I'll see if it'll let me share it. Might take it a minute for it to come up. Uh, this is from the San Antonio Express News. It is from April 10th. A missing student, Caleb Harris's family, raises reward for info, a police build timeline of his disappearance. And there's a picture of Caleb. Uh, police have established a timeline of events leading up to the disappearance of New Braunfels College student Caleb Harris, whose family has now increased a $25,000 reward to $50,000 for information leading to his safe return. Uh, the 21-year-old who attends Texas A&M Corpus Christi has been missing since the early hours of March 4th. He was last seen at his apartment in the 1900 block of Ennis uh, Jocelyn Road. He was there with his roommates and a mutual friend, police said, in an update March 28th. Uh, they just have a little timeline here. Uh, most of it we know. 12.56 a.m. He was captured by a doorbell camera playing with the puppy with his roommates. The friend left soon after. There was no sign of anything amiss. Uh, 2.20 a.m. One roommate said he was going to bed and Caleb responded that he was going to order food by Uber Eats for his uh, lunch for school the next day. 2.44, he sent a Snapchat video to his sister uh, that shows him walking the puppy in the parking lot. 
3.03 a.m. was that last one, Snapchat video uh, to a friend showing the bridge. At 3.12 a.m., the cell tower received the last location information from his phone. 3.20, the Uber Eats driver left his order at the door. At 11 a.m., one of uh, his roommates found his order still sitting at the door. The roommates were alarmed when they discovered his truck keys and wallet were still at the apartment. They searched uh, for him briefly and uh, reported him missing soon after. Uh, responding police officers obviously checked all the hospitals and uh, searched the area for any sign of violence, but to no avail. Inside the apartment, there was no sign of foul play. Police have ruled out family, friends, and the Uber Eats driver. Um, his family has been active in the search. His father told the Express News that his son's behavior leading up to the disappearance was not indicative of plans to run away. Uh, Caleb is a uh, white male, five foot eleven, one hundred eighty pounds, with brown hair and brown eyes. Anyone with information is asked to call the Corpus Christi Police Department at three six one eight six eight eight six two eight four zero, or submit an anonymous tip at eight 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 tips. Uh, the Harris family has also set up a tip line at three six one eight two six two nine five zero. So that is um, some information about, oh, let me just stop sharing that, about Caleb Harris. So please keep his uh, name and face out there. Hold up in comments. Hey, Arthur says that uh, he's seen some uh, speculation about Reddit accounts. Yeah, I heard about something about a Reddit account um, about, um, that could be connected to Caleb, but none of it has been verified by law enforcement, so I haven't put anything out. Absolutely. All right, so now, finally, okay. I think I got, let me check my bookmarks and I think that is all I had. Yes. So first, hopefully this will load. Uh, we'll talk about the remains um, that have been found regarding uh, London Devon and the Blake Devon case. Horrible, strange case. I just, Oh, I, I just don't understand um, how these two uh, children went missing and uh, nobody, apparently, none of the family members, uh, a lot of families didn't know, family members didn't know they were missing. Oh, shoot. I'm on. I might have to find a different article. I was having trouble getting this one to come up earlier. And then there's been some uh, comments from, I think, London's bi biological mother and maybe Blake, an aunt or a biological um, claiming that they didn't know anything about uh, them disappearing. It's just bizarre. Very bizarre. Oh, once again. I might have to find another article to use if this one won't come up. Making sure my comments are caught up on. There it is. Okay, let me see if it'll screen share it. Put that down for a minute. Let's see if it'll come up. I take a minute. Um. Oh, there it is. This is from uh, spectrumlocalnews.com. 
you see the picture um, there. On the very left is London Devon, and the middle is Blake. Um, I think that picture was taken when he was about five years old. And then on the very right is the age progression photo of Blake. And this is from April 12th. It says remains found in connection to search for Blake and L London Devon Fayetteville police say. Um, partial skeletal human remains were found in the case of Blake and London Devon, but it has not been confirmed who they belong to. Uh, the Fayetteville Police Department said in a press release Friday. Um, authorities. Uh, say the remains uh, were not found at the old Devon home on Bearville Drive, which authorities have searched twice. Uh, Blake, who would be 17 years old now, and London, who would be 27, lived with the same foster family and neither had been seen in several years. Uh, the remains were sent to the North Carolina Office of the Chief Medical Examiner, but have not been identified yet. Testing could take weeks to months and may not lead to a positive identification, according to police. The department said that information from Fayetteville police and the FBI led detectives to locate the remains. They were not located at the Devon home on Berryville Drive, uh, which was searched by authorities last week. Fayetteville police said that no new information will be released at this time. Uh, what we know so far, the police are looking for Blake and London Devon. Police said family members told them Blake Devon has not been seen for, quote, several years and would now be 17 years old. London Devon, who is now 27, has not been seen since 2019, according to the police. Uh, both lived with the same foster family who moved to Fayetteville in 2015. While conducting interviews and a separate police investigation, Several members of Blake's family reported they have not seen him in several years. On March 27, 2024, the Fayetteville Police Department and the FBI searched uh, three locations in Fayetteville, North Carolina. As part of the exp expanding investigation to find Blake, FBI officials said. Investigators with the FBI and Fayetteville Police searched the old Devon home on April 8th. Authorities closed the Berryville Drive in Fayetteville as they searched a home in a residential neighborhood. There was a heavy police presence, including FBI agents, a forensics team, and canine units. It was the second time that the home was searched, uh, being searched once before on April 5th. Uh, the Devon family moved to the area in 2015, but no longer lived there. Authorities are asking anyone who has encountered Blake, London, or the Devon family since 2015 to contact authorities. Officers are still attempting to piece together the timeline of the relatives' disappearances. Uh, Felicia Chandler, who is uh, Blake's biological mother, posted on Facebook Wednesday asking for the police's uh, help finding her son. She said Blake's birth name is Trenton Dwayne Schuler and was char uh, changed when he was, quote, uh, he was taken from me and given to a foster family. After investigating the, the disappearance of Blake, authorities identified London Devon as a possible missing relative of Blake. London Devon, who would be 27 years old, was last seen in Fayetteville in 2019, according to investigators. Uh, the most recent photo available to investigators is from approximately 2007 when she was likely 12 years old. Uh, police say while conducting interviews in a separate investigation, members of Blake's family reported that they had not seen him in several years. It is not clear how long it's been since he was last seen. Due to the unusual circumstances of his reported disappearance, uh, the Fayetteville Police Department's uh, homicide unit, which also investigates missing and endangered persons, is leading the investigation, police said. Uh, the police department has repeatedly asked for the public's help to find Blake and London and to piece together the timeline of their disappearance. Uh, Fayetteville Police and the FBI searched three, lo three, three locations on March 27th. 
as part of the investigation into Devin's disappearance. Uh, the last photo of Blake available to investigators is from approximately 2012, which I believe is when he was around five years old. Uh, the FBI added a poster of Blake uh, to its missing person webpage and will release it on its social media accounts. Uh, detectives and uh, special agents are following a number of leads. And I've conducted interviews to gather information to locate Blake, uh, police said. Anyone with information regarding the location of Blake or London Devon is asked to call the Fayetteville Police Tip Line at 910-578-2697 or contact the FBI at 1-800-CALL-FBI. So it will be interesting uh, to say the least. Um, like they said, it could take weeks, months, or possibly years um, to get these uh, remains examined, and, and they made it a point in the article to say that even then it may not be possible to make an identification. So uh, we'll just uh, keep London and Blake's uh, faces out there, and, um, and uh, hopefully something uh, will be resolved. All right, and I do have a video um, to play because I found an article that did have um, some more pictures, uh, different pictures of London. So let me see. Uh, I will once again mute my mic and my cam. News tonight, for the first time, we are seeing more photos of London Devon. Faithful police say she and her adoptive brother Blake have been missing for years, but it wasn't until recently that they were reported missing. Tonight, WRS Chris Lovingood talked to a woman who says she's London's biological mother. And Chris, I can't imagine all the emotions that she must be going through. I mean, understandably so, Gerald. As she described it, she's numb. She didn't want to interview on camera. But Sherry Foster did share with me more photos from various stages of London Devon's life. There they are together when they were younger. In these photos reveals a smiling mother and her daughter, a young, curly-haired girl surrounded by loved ones. And there's also a photo where Foster says she received from the family in 2011, that adoptive family, right there on your screen. Sherry Foster told me she hasn't seen or heard from her daughter since around 2001. Now, put this photo next to the only photo investigators provided, saying it was taken in 2007, and you can get a better idea of how she looked then, but it's unclear how she looks now at age 27. As for London's disappearance, Foster says she didn't even learn about it until last Thursday, April 4th. Foster says that her life was already upside down and it's, quote, just messed up that her daughter is missing, end quote. Now, join me at 1030 because we are going to center our focus on one person we haven't heard from, not yet, but we're trying to. Avante Emerald Devon. A civil court database says that she is the one who was approved to adopt both Blake and London Devon. Gerald. And we're learning more about this case every week. Thank you, Chris. All right, that was the video. Once again, my computer's pooped out on me. Um, that I found with a uh, get back to the right way out. There we go. Nope, that one. Um, yeah, Arctic uh, made a good point. He says, uh, I don't understand how a photo of London that old is the most recent if she's only been missing since 2019 and why haven't they put down an age progress photo of her? I agree with you. I have so many questions, uh, mainly about where is this uh, Avante, whatever her last name is, the uh, foster mother? Because apparently the only photos they have of Blake and London are maybe from before they were put into her foster care with that family. Why didn't they have any pictures of them? Um, I don't even know how long they were with the foster family uh, before they mysteriously disappeared. Um, so many questions. Um, 
mostly about the questions I have are obviously about um, the foster family. That to me, that is uh, obviously, in my opinion, the key key to all of this is the foster family. Trying to get back into my trying to get back into my computer here. Let's see what we got next. Oh, ooh, we're almost two hours in already. All right. That's probably not going to work. All right. Next, we have uh, some more missing. Uh, let me bring up my larger one right quick to read. Um, this is Zachary Carey. Um, the middle there is a missing poster. He is 38 years old, uh, 5 foot 5, 250 to 280 pounds, a dark brown receding hairline, green eyes. He was last seen wearing a black zip up jacket with white letters on the back, reading uh, Lincoln Tech Welding and blue jeans with silver uh, chain necklaces, brown boots with steel toes. He has a neck tattoo that says Laura, a forearm sleeve. And a 51 on the back of the left calf and 50 on the back of the right calf. Uh, he was last seen off Highway 68 near the Welcome to Linville sign. He may be in uh, Vanderburg or the Dale area or Lincoln State Park. If you have any information, please contact the Warwick County Sheriff's Department. And I should have uh, already had the article loading. I do have an article that gives a little bit more information. And I believe I've seen uh, Zachary on Tatum, uh, Tatum's channel and maybe Arctic has shared. Now, I could be wrong, but um, let's see if I can get this uh, article to load. Check comments. If there are any. Nope. Hopefully the article will load in a timely manner. <clears throat> or not. It is from 14news.com. If it will load. Let's see a comment. Uh, Arctic um, says, uh, Zach's poor mom has been all over Facebook showing her son's information. Yes, Tatum and I both covered him. Yes, I thought I'd seen, uh, like you said, both of you and uh, I think uh, one of the couple of videos that I've watched so far on Tatum's channel, um, Zachary was one of the ones that she uh, shared. And then I saw that you had shared, shared him also. Uh -huh. Close out and do a new tab. Sometimes that sometimes that works, sometimes not. With my swamp signal. I apologize guys for my for my slow signal. Out here in the in the in the country, uh, we don't have a whole lot of cell towers, so it's a hit and miss out here. when it comes to loading these articles. Mm. Oh, come on. Because I think, oh, Arctic, uh, I don't think it told on the, um, when exactly he went missing. I know it was in May. Oh, there it comes. Okay, I got the article up. It was in May. May 30th. I can't remember the year. Okay, so this is from uh, 14news.com and it is from, I believe, 2023, July of 2023. And it says, uh, there's been no word from 38-year-old Zachary Carey uh, since May 30th of 2023. Family members say the Evansville man was dropped off at the Linville welcome sign. Five days later, his phone was found in the same spot. 
They say it is uh, common for him to go camping in the woods for a few days, but he always comes back home. Sheriff Wilder said cadaver dogs and a drone were used to look for Carrie, but nothing was found. Uh, the family is still hoping he will come home. Uh, call me. I will take off work. We will sit down. We'll go ride mo the mopeds together. We'll do anything. Just come home, says Carrie's sister, Rachel Fisher. That's just one of the many pleas of a desperate family looking to bring their cousin, brother, and son home. He has a right to go uh, to go do something without mom's permission. It's just it was longer than it should have been because his mother, uh, Gina Carey. A self-proclaimed survivalist, family and friends say Carey thrived in the woods, often going for days at a time with little to no supplies. Um, at that time, uh, it had been six weeks since Carrie's last sighting and his uh, recent bout, bout with mental health issues combined with his extended period of no contact has them concerned. According to Warwick County Sheriff Michael Wilder, the woods in the area are thick uh, this time of year, <clears throat> excuse me, and their initial searches proved to be fruitless. Uh, we did some searches of that area with drones, also with canines, said Wilder. Uh, Carrie's cell phone was discovered near the sign where he was dropped off, though, and Sheriff Wilder says they aren't giving up hope. With this type of heat, this type of weather conditions, we feel like someone should have seen him by now or heard from him. So uh, people, so we are very concerned and we are not giving up, says Wilder. Uh, the same is true for his family, who say if anybody is going to make it in the woods in the middle of summer heat, it is uh, Zach. They don't believe he just ran away. They think he is still out there. He had plans with us, said Rachel. Uh, Zach doesn't make a promise and not keep it. He's never been gone this long, first of all, and he never goes anywhere without telling us where he is at, uh, says his other sister, Cecilia Carey. Uh, she said, let's go get Cutter out of jail. Cutter apparently was in the dog pound. Uh, we need you, says Rachel. As the search continues day after day, uh, the Warwick County Sheriff's Office is asking if anybody in the area sees anything, even something small, please contact them. Uh, they say that may be the key to getting uh, Zachary back home to his family. Uh, so that is the article that I had on uh, Zachary. That was the most recent one I could find. Thank you, Miss Barbara. Uh, Miss Barbara, always sharing. Miss Barbara's always sharing. She says, we'll share everywhere I can. Thank you, Miss Barb. Miss Barb is a fine lady. All right, let's see. Um, we got next. This is a uh, cold case from, let me get the uh, articles going. Uh, this is one I found I thought was interesting. They're using um, genetic genealogy. Let me read his uh, flyer and the basic information while I'm waiting for the uh, article to load. Uh, this is Jason Keith Cannon. He was just two years old when he went missing. He was last seen on the front porch of his home in Boise, Idaho, around 2 p.m. on March 16, 1983. His mother went inside for a few minutes, and when she returned, uh, Jason was gone. An extensive search of the area turned up no sign of him. He is believed to have been abducted by a non-family member. He has a scar above his right eye. Uh, he has two moles on his neck and possibly more on his back. Um, he has blonde hair and brown eyes. Anyone with information should call the Boise Police Department at 208-377-6790. And let me see if the article is going to come up once again. Go to comments while it's loading. Let's see. Um, Sunshine said, a mini monster uh, brought me a cold, cold case out of Cali. Uh, the Yuma 5. Very interesting case. Hmm. You know me, I love those cold cases. Uh, love those cold cases. The Yuma 5. I'll have to look at the Yuma 5. And then Chris earlier um, said he sent me some info about a, the Fort Worth trio. I'm going to have to look into that one. 
Arfix says that he has heard of that one, the uh, Yuma 5. I'm going to have to get caught up on that one. That's an, one I haven't heard of. Oh, goodness. I'm telling you. Swamps, the, my, my country swamp signal is about to get me. I'm going to throw, throw my laptop across the room. I don't even know how far we're into. Uh, can't tell on my phone. No, we're two hours in. We're not bad. Not bad. Almost said mad. <laughs> they sound like now. Sunshine sounds like me. She said uh, she was up for hours digging and watching docs on it. She went down the rabbit hole. I do that on cases too that I haven't heard of or that I come across. Uh, yep, I go down that rabbit hole and I'll be up all night um, on YouTube, uh, streaming it to my TV and uh, just watch doc after doc or any kind of videos I can find on YouTube about whatever particular case that I'm uh, looking at. Oh, I don't know if this article is going to come up. I'm not going to wait all night for it. Absolutely. Arctic says, uh, I believe it's easy to get lost in these cases. Absolutely. I do. I do go down the rabbit hole. Not the rabbit hole, like the conspiracy theory, crazy rabbit holes, but just going down like uh, Sunshine said, going down the rabbit hole, uh, watching stuff about a certain case. Oh, there it is. It finally came up. Okay. Uh, this is from KTVB.com. And it is from a uh, fairly recent April 5th of this year. Uh, it says a, a positive outcome is what we all hope for police using forensic genetic genealogy in 1983 cold case. And speaking of a uh, genealogist, I believe it was Thursday when I was doing the case of the week. Um, Lisa Joe, a lady named Lisa Joe was in here and she is a genealogist. So I hope she comes back someday and uh, because I was grilling her Thursday on uh, on her work that she does. So very, very glad to have uh, had her in there. So I hope she comes back. But anyway, uh, Jason Cannon uh, was this is three was uh, three years old when he disappeared. His mom said that she grabbed him a jacket from the house. And when she came back outside, he was gone. So another one that just seemingly. Disappeared in the thin air, although we know that kids just don't vanish by themselves. Uh, it says three year old Jason Cannon was last seen sitting on his front porch in Boise in March of 1983. He was waiting for his older brother to come home from school, and it was a little chilly, so his mother went inside to get him a jacket. When she went back to the porch, Jason was gone. A Boise police detective uh, Paul uh, Jagosh said Jason's mother had been baking brownies at the time for her two sons and the department thinks that Jason was abducted. Uh, his brother was his hero Jagosh said so that was kind of a daily thing for him. He was excited when his brother was coming home and she went in to get a coat and came back out and he was gone it just absolutely disappeared. The, uh, the case keeps Jagosh up at night. He said he wonders if Jason is okay, who took him, and if there can be any closure to this case. Now he's hoping that by re-interviewing people, getting the case back into the public discussion, and using forensic genetic genealogy, this cold case could heat up. The, de the detective said police have been talking to people that were originally interviewed, hoping they might remember something. He said, even though so much time has gone by, people still remember when a child goes missing. Absolutely. They think about it. Maybe you talk to them a day or two later, Jay Gosh said. But that is our hope that there's a piece of the puzzle that we're missing. We'd really like to speak with people who lived in that immediate area and have something knowledgeable about the case. When Jason originally went missing, there were theories that he had wandered to a nearby canal and drowned. But Jay Gosh said that it is unlikely and that original police reports show that Jason was actually scared of water. 
in reading the, the police reports, the dive teams, the detectives, <clears throat> excuse me, all talked about how none of them believed that the body would have floated uh, to the Boise River. Uh, Jay Gosh said, I went and walked along that entire canal bank and looked at what they were describing in the police reports, and it makes sense. Uh, apparently, it was very shallow. The detective said reports also show that there was a large chain link fence around the canal at the time that Jason disappeared. Uh, Jason's house was located at uh, 32nd Street and Jordan Street. Um, it says he loved his highlight of the day, his brother coming home from school, and mom had brownies in the oven, Jay Gosh said. What three-year-old kid just wanders off during that time? So if he didn't go in the canal, a three-year-old doesn't just walk off and raise themselves. And that's why we strongly believe that this was an, an abduction or kidnapping. Now, who did it and what their motives are, we don't know. Something that could crack the case is forensic genetic genealogy. Um, it is when law enforcement uh, uses DNA analysis with genetic genealogy research to see if there are any matches. Uh, Jay Gosh said Jason potentially could be alive and not know not know that he was abducted. And we were, um, we've seen cases that way. I believe um, Arctic brought it up too, or somebody did. Um, I've read about cases that kids didn't know they'd been abducted until they um, applied for something for college and uh, found out that uh, they had been kidnapped, that they weren't who they thought they were. Um, since we just started the DNA process, Jay Gosh says, and we're waiting for the results to come back and start doing the ge uh, genealogical searches. But we don't have anything of Jason's that we could get DNA off of, and that would actually fill in that void. At this point, it's a waiting game of if his DNA pops up as a live sample or if remains are found. Jay Gosh, Jay Gosh said, even if the investigation leads to remains, at least that is some kind of closure for uh, Jason's family. I think the big thing here is that the Boise police doesn't give up. We're going to work this case and, and continue working this case. As long as there are leads to follow, we're going to follow up and keep this case alive. And hopefully with the media's interest that people across the country see this, uh, they have suspicions, any knowledge whatsoever that we're looking uh, to speak with you and get that information. And we're going to follow up any lead that comes in, uh, Jay Gosh said. So if you think you might be Jason or have any information on his case, uh, contact the uh, Boise Police Department. That does not give a number. But that, I just thought that was interesting. Uh, you know me, I'm always interested in, uh, for one, the cold cases and when they are using uh, the genetic genetic genealogy. Uh, he caught up in comments. Yep, I'm the same way. I'm the same way, Sunshine. She says it's like I want to read, watch, find anything I can or I can't sleep. Oh, yeah. I've gone down that rabbit hole, got on YouTube, and found it, or whatever case that I came across and was interested in. And the next thing I know, I look at and I'm laying on the bed watching it on my TV, streaming it to my TV, and next thing I know, the sun's coming up. I'm like, holy shnikes, I'm going to sit here all night. Oh, now our biggest. <laughs> oh, Moses could outrun uh, my internet speed. Yeah, you're pro you're most definitely right. Um, you live in Arkansas. I don't know if you, you, you probably don't live in a rural area like I do, but uh, yeah, out here in the sticks in the country, it's a, uh, for one, we don't have that many cell towers, and then they're always one or the other is going down. And then here a uh, month or so ago, if that long, I went without a, uh, about three days without any uh, spotty cell service, no internet service in my phone because they were replacing two tower, two of the probably two towers that we have around here that were both down and they were repairing them at the same time. So. Yeah, it's uh, out here in the country. It's uh, like I said, it's hit and miss. I just go on a wing and a prayer.
Yep, Sunshine says, uh, hers is horrible if it rains, wind blows, a leaf falls from a tree at the edge of the property, it's going to light. Yeah, that's the way it is with my uh, sunlight, too, that I have a dish. So if a, a little leaf comes, you know, blows the wrong way, or if one little cloud or a raindrop falls, then the sunlight comes out, too. So I'm just screwed either way. Yes, uh, Sunshine makes an excellent point. Uh, back then, there were a lot of baby snatchers. You had nurses stealing babies at the hospital. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I've come across and shared a couple of cases of uh, nurses um, stealing babies from hospitals. You don't hear about that so much uh, nowadays, or at least I haven't. But back in the day, you definitely heard of it. <laughs> oh, Arca says, before I got fiber, I swear the information was transferred on the web by carrier pigeon. I think that's what I have here is carrier pigeons. I may need to go check outside and see if I see any of them sitting around there anywhere. Oh, goodness. You're all cracking me up. He does. Yeah, now that you mention it, uh, Arca said that boy looks so much like Adam Wall. She does. Uh, yeah, he does favor Adam. All right, I think I'm caught up maybe in comments. Oh, hey, we still got nine people here. I guess we'll keep going. I don't know how much I got left. I'll just put a slideshow together and we'll see what we can get through. In a... All right, this is another cold case. Uh, once again, let me get the... Uh... Get the article loading while I read the... Uh... Let me go to my... Go to my supersized uh, slideshow here so I can read the information. This is uh, Phyllis Brewer. Uh, she went missing on June 13th, 1981 from uh, Lowellville, Ohio. Uh, Says so she was be uh, 59 years old now. I do have an article that... Uh, I don't know how old exactly she was when she went missing, but I do have an article to read if it'll come up. Uh, she's a white female, red hair, unknown eye color, five foot seven, one hundred and thirty-five pounds. Uh, the picture on the right of the missing, or on, yeah, on the right of the missing poster is poster is age progressed to fifty-five. Um, so if you have any information regarding Phyllis, um. Call 911 or 1-800-THE-LOST, which is uh, the Nick Mac number. Or you can call the uh, Mahoning County Sheriff's Office at 1-330-480-5000. Let me check on the progress. Once again, a blank screen. Uh, let me close it out. Try again. You know, and, and some nights it'll work perfectly fast, and then some nights it's it's like this. It's uh, a turtle could bring me the information faster than the than my Wi-Fi hotspot can. I'm gonna blame it on I have Verizon. I'll blame it on Verizon. Check comments while we're waiting. Got a new name. Welcome, Terry Dean. Good to have you here. Says uh, he's uh, listening and appreciate your content. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, if you don't mind um, telling us uh, how you found us, um, no matter how you found us, we're glad to have you here. Thank you for being here. It's always good to see uh, new names in here. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we have such a wonderful community here. Everybody is always so welcoming of uh, new names and new people that we have in here. Always good to see. Let me check the progress. Once again, a blank screen. Oh, I swear to goodness. Maybe I should just start um, doing the videos of all week because most of these articles have videos that I just screen record on my phone because it. 
my signal would definitely not let me screen share a video to play um so i so i um screen record the videos on uh from my phone and then uh that's how i play the videos on here maybe that's what i should start doing and i think on a couple of the more of these cases i have i do have videos instead of articles oh my goodness gracious oh excellent uh terry says uh things that came up on my feed because i sub to arctic fox excellent thank you for subbing to arctic fox he is wonderful he does wonderful work Jesus, Mary and Joseph, making my Irish come out again. It's the only time I say Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Let me check comments. Thank you very much. Uh, Terry says he just subbed up. Thank you so much. Always appreciated. Oh, goodness. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing is coming up. Go back to comments. Oh, Mitzi, uh, Mitzi says uh, she graduated uh, high school in 1983. That is a cold case. Yeah, I graduated in 89. So I, I'm there with you. <laughs> Thanks, T. You're really giving me. Arctic says, now we know what it was like in the old days when we had to wait hours for an article to get transmitted by telegraph. Telling you, the telegraph will be faster than my hotspot, my phone. I don't think, I don't even think this one's going to come up at all. We had to save this one for um, Saturday night because we've already been here. I don't even know how long we've been on here. I can't see it on my phone. Oh, two, uh, two hours and 21 minutes. That's not too bad. Mm. I'll try one more time if it doesn't come up um we'll go back to it saturday night because saturday i'm most likely going to do a true crime after dark um saturday we'll just skip we might skip the other ones that have articles and and just do i think i have one or two that uh i just had a video freaking ridiculous oh goodness All right, we'll see what the next story is supposed to be. I may have a yes, I have a video. Okay, so we might go back to uh, to Phyllis Brewer, but I do have a video. Um, this is Kiara Coles. Let me give you the information from her flyer. Um, she went missing or has been missing since I'll talk since october 2nd 2018 uh she was seen leaving her apartment at 81st street and vernon avenue on the south side of chicago illinois uh she was 26 years old five foot four 125 pounds with brown hair and brown eyes she was three months pregnant when she went missing uh she was dressed in her uh, postal uh, letter carrier uniform when she went missing she has a tattoo of a heart on her right hand uh lucky libra on her back um so if you have any information regarding kiara or her disappearance uh, you can call the u.s postal inspection service at 877-876-2455 or the chicago police department at 312-747-8274 
Let me go back over. Well, I'm going to push the wrong button and put this into a dumpster fire. All right, I'm going to um, let me remove that one. Play the video. Once again, I'm going to mute out my um, cam and my mic. States exclusive tonight. It involves the case of Kiara Coles, the pregnant postal worker missing since October of 2018. Tonight, for the first time, a top Chicago police detective sits down with us to talk about the clues, the evidence, and the key to solving this case. She didn't disappear on her own accord, in my opinion. Senior homicide detective Will Svilar has studied every moment of the day 26 year old Kiara Coles was last seen. And Chicago police have now released a video timeline. The pregnant postal worker called her mom as she shopped for baby supplies on the afternoon of Tuesday, October 2nd, 2018. She was just so excited she didn't even know what to get. No sign that anything was wrong. No sign. That was the last conversation Karen Phillips ever had with her daughter. A short time later, you see Kiara carrying her shopping bags into her apartment building in the 8100 block of South Vernon. That evening, Detective Svilar says she left in her car with a man they call a person of interest. Is she driving or is the man? She is driving. They went to a 24-hour Walgreens at 8600 South Cottage Grove. And the security tape shows her withdrawing hundreds of dollars from an ATM machine. Very unusual for Kira, her mother says, especially at 1043 on a Chicago night. I don't understand why she'll be taking $400 out because she real cautious with spending. This was the last time Kira Coles was ever seen. Police say the evidence shows the man drove her car back to her neighborhood alone and parked down the street before 1145 that night and got out on the passenger side of the car. Why would he get out of the passenger seat? I can only speculate. It's not like you're opening a car into traffic. My speculation is he's staging the seat. Perhaps sliding the driver's seat forward by hand to make it look like Kira had been driving. Police say he then walked to another car parked nearby and drove away. His car? Yes. Same person of interest? Yes. Though this is still officially a missing person case, Svilar is a homicide detective who's worked hundreds of murder cases since 1998. Do you think whatever happened was over in less than one hour? Yes. I think the last time we see Kiara, she is unfortunately not alive much longer after that. Still, Svilar emphasizes there's always a chance Kiara could be alive. As for the person of interest, police say he returned to Kiara's apartment alone the next morning and left with some items in hand. This person that we're referring to is not a stranger. This person has access to this apartment all the time. Is it unusual for him to go in there? No, it's not. In the totality of circumstances, considering what has happened probably the night before, yeah, that's a big deal. Chicago police have never named the person of interest, but Kieran Phillips says he is Josh Simmons, Kira's boyfriend and presumed father of her unborn child. NBC5 Investigates found no criminal history in his past. Karen Phillips reported her daughter missing the night after the ATM withdrawal and says she was there with Simmons as police searched the apartment. Did you ask if he'd seen her? Yeah, he said he hadn't seen her, but he'd been talking to her, which found out that was a lie. He gave some conflicting accounts, wasn't consistent on some of his statements, and then uh, didn't want to talk to us anymore. Simmons soon moved out of state with the mother of some of his children. He did not respond to our written request for comment, mailed to his last known address in Louisiana. What do you want to say to Josh Simmons? I want to say that I know you know something. You know what happened. You don't know the pain that I feel not knowing what's going on with my child. And I wish you would come forward and tell us what really happened to Kiara. If you have any information about the disappearance of Kiara Coles, contact Chicago Police at 833-408-0069 or 312-746-7330 or online at CPD tip. All right, that was the, oh goodness, once again, my computer's pooped my just one of the other article that I've been trying to get to come up for like two days now finally came up. It uh let 
get to some comments and then we will go back to it. So that was Kiara Cole's information. Um, my opinion. Yeah, definitely. Um, sounds like the boyfriend. But once again, we don't know. We weren't there. Um, but he'd be number one on my list, obviously. Let's see, uh, Dean had a comment I wanted to get to. There it is. Um, uh, Dean says, I'll go back and catch what I missed. Missing persons is what first drew me to true crime. I always appreciate factual reporting, and I know the families do as well. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, that's what I strive for on my channel. I know that is what Sunshine uh, strives for and does on the mind of monsters. Um, T at the Arctic Fox True Crime, he's uh, he, nothing but the facts, no drama. As the Sunshine says, she's got the uh, no drama llama. We stick to the facts. Um, we don't do victim blaming, uh, family blaming, no bashing of victims or families. Uh, we just get the information out to uh, the best of our abilities. So thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Mitzi. Uh, Mitzi says so true about factual reporting. There are uh, there are some, thankfully. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, Terry says it is very lacking these days and so critical to these cases. Absolutely. Because all the drama and the misinformation that just takes away the focus from the missing. And the missing are always the most important part of any case, the missing or the uh, the victims. If it's a homicide case, cold case, or a, a new, you know, a new case. And um, it just irritates the fire out of me <laughs> with these, some of these people and some of these channels that are just. Uh, uh, Terry said, I'm assuming you're talking about Kira. Did she have her phone on her? I do not know that. Um, and all the articles I've read. Either I missed that information or they didn't say. Um, I'm assuming if I'm assuming that um, law enforcement has uh, tried to ping it or find it. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Terry. If I couldn't tell by your picture. I'm sorry, Terry. I apologize. Terry said uh, she's a female. That's OK. I lost my masculine name. I'm sorry. I was looking at your little avatar about this big and I couldn't tell. I'm sorry. Thank you, Miss Terry. Miss Terry, I apologize. Forgive me. That's my bad. Um, but yeah, as far as the phone, um, I I don't know about the phone, but I will look into it and see if I can find any information about it. Miss, but yeah, I pol I apologize, Terry. Like I said, I even with my glasses, my cheaters, my cheap uh either dollar tree or walmart uh, readers and i'm trying to look i'm about this big um even on my computer screen i couldn't tell i apologize all right so now we'll go back to phyllis brewer because the article did finally come up all right, uh, get through this so we can get out of here. Um, this comes from cleveland19.com. It is from March 28th of this year. A new, let me get rid of some ads if they'll go away. If not, a new leads in 1980s case of missing woman point to Ashtabula County. And uh, this is from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, a teenager from Northeast Ohio has been missing for more than 40 years, but this cold case now has new movement. For years, the story was she had vanished while she was out on a long walk. But what if that is not what happened? New leads in the case have detective focused on finding answers in Ashtabula County. Phyllis Brewer, known as Sparky, Disappeared at 19 years old in the summer of 1981 from a suburb, suburb of Youngstown. Uh, that's the information the detectives had when they reopened her missing persons case 10 years ago after her sister um, passed away. They went to notify Phyllis, her sister, 
had that Phyllis had passed away, but they couldn't find her. So they went to notify Phyllis that her sister had passed away, and then they couldn't find her. And it says uh, they found out that she'd been reported missing, but never entered into leads or NCIC as a missing person, said Detective uh, Patrick Mondora with the Mahoning County Sheriff's Office. Phyllis went missing from an area with no law enforcement at the time, said it is a rural area. Department Detective Mondora said they had a constable that would drive around. Um, so he started the case from square one, looking for immediate family members to talk to. But they had all passed away, and he couldn't find anyone who knew Phyllis well. Um, everything's gone. Archives, he said, uh, they found a couple of pictures of her, and that's it. That's all we have to go on, he said. Uh, Detective Mondora worked with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children to come up with two age progressions, and I probably should have shared the screen so let me see if it'll share so you can see the age progression photos if it'll come up there they are there is the age progression screens the one on uh the left is age to 55, and the one on the right is age to 60, of what Phyllis would look like. All right. Um, over time, about 100 people reached out to the sheriff's office from across the country saying that they had spotted her, but none of those leads panned out. Our investigation all centered around this area because the story was she left her home and never came home, Mondora said. But recently, a distant relative brought him information that would point them in a new direction. The family at the time believed that the father may have taken her life um, in Cano. Uh, we've checked with the medical examiners up there, all law enforcement up, up there to see if they have any cold cases with the Jane Doe. And there's nothing uh, that there that theory hasn't been proven. I'm assuming they're talking about that possibly the father may have been the offender. But Detective Mondora also found out Phyllis had actually been going to Cano High School in Ashtabula County when she went missing. Uh, that is about an hour north of where they thought she vanished from in Mahoning County. As she lived in Cano with her father, Robert Brewer, off a of dirt road and not far from I-90. Uh, it says he passed away years ago. We asked the, the detective whether this new lead in Cano could help solve the case. Um, it would be nice um, to close this. It's on my desk. Like I said, we've been working on it since 2014. It's there. You see it every day. And every now and then you'll get a hit from the uh, National Center of a possible sighting uh, from a law enforcement agency, Mondora said. And that is Detective Mondora. Um, 19 Investigates checked yearbooks at the Cano Public, Public Library to see what we could find on Phyllis Brewer. We spotted her name only once in the 1979 yearbook, Missing a Photo. But after searching Cano Municipal Court Records online, we found something puzzling. They showed Phyllis had at least two run-ins with Cano Police in 1982, but she is listed as disappearing in 1981. Says we just got back court records showing Phyllis served 10 days in jail and they let her out in May of 1982. So could Phyllis have gone missing later than law enforcement thought or could someone else have been using her identity? Detective Mondora is looking into it. He is also trying to learn more about Phyllis and her father and he needs the public's help. If they have anything, please give us a call, he said. Phyllis Brewer would be 62 years old if she is still alive today. If you know her, knew her, or remember anything about her or her family, you can call the Mahoning County uh, Sheriff's Office with any information at 330-480-5051. So that was very interesting that when uh, apparently when this uh, 
uh, who did I say it was, Cleveland19.com looked into it. They found records of her being arrested in 1982, but she was, uh, as I said, reported missing in 81. So was she still alive in 1982 or was someone else using her identity? So. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Miss Terry said that's okay. way okay. I've got a ball cap on a lot. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Miss Terry says, always glad to hear about new leads on old cases. Gives hope to so many families. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Miss Barbara says, uh, interesting. Yes, I thought that was very interesting. And I don't even remember where I found that at. I think actually it. Uh, on my phone, and when I go to Google, uh, when I hit the home, it if you scroll down, it has different stories. And apparently, uh, surprise, surprise, I search a lot of uh, articles about true crime and uh, whatnot and, and cold cases. So, of course, most of the stories that come up in my feed are about missing persons or cold cases. So, I find a lot of them through there. So, that's probably where I found that one. But at any rate, I thought it was interesting. Yep, uh, Miss Terry's got the uh, questioning face. Uh, I don't know if it came up. Uh, yep, there it is. My computer. Surprise, surprise. Once again, my computer's being slow. Get caught up in that. All right. Let's see what we got next. I promise. Well, I think we're maybe almost done. I don't know how many more. Okay, we did Kiara. All right, Ebony uh, Giddens. See if once again, see if uh, see if it'll come up. If not, um, since we're almost three hours in, I'll uh, save the article. Um, the article for a uh, Saturday, but I will give you her uh, information at the very least tonight. So this is Ebony Giddens, and I got this one uh, most definitely from one of the uh, many missing persons or cold case uh, Facebook groups I'm in. And I think maybe Chris, I don't know if Chris Gideon is still here. I think he brought it to my attention. He has shared it, and then probably uh, Arctic probably shared it too. Arctic is a machine. He shares uh, every <laughs> any missing person and every missing person. Uh, so, Ebony uh, Giddens uh, was 30 years old, a black female, foot nine, 110 pounds, uh, brown eyes, black hair. Uh, the Columbus Police Department and the family of Ebony Giddens are asking the public for assistance locating Ebony. She was last seen on March 12th of 2018. So, what about uh, six years now? Um on montclair drive in columbus georgia at the time ebony went missing she was 27 years old today she will be 31. if you have any information concerning ebony uh, please contact 911 or the columbus police department uh, special victims unit at 706-653-3449 or uh, sergeant l zeverink at 706-225-4384 all right, once again, I shall check. And once again, it has not come up yet. Get to some comments. There's Miss Peggy. Hi, Miss Peggy. Good to see you. Thank you. Uh, Miss Peggy says thanks for sharing all this information. Absolutely, ma'am. I know you were here uh, Thursday night. I think me and you and uh, Miss Lisa Joe were having the conversations about uh, Miss Lisa Joe, and I can't remember her last name. Um, the genealogist um, that was in chat. So welcome back, Miss Peggy. All right, once again, let me check. Oh my goodness. And these are the last two. I got this story and one more story, but if they won't come up, I'll I'll just give you the basic information tonight and I'll save them for Saturday. And maybe 
by the grace of God or a miracle, my um my internet, my uh, hotspot, Wi-Fi, cell phone service will be working better. But I'm not going to hold my breath. Yeah. Do do do. Let's hope we get through these last two cases and uh, by the uh, three hour mark. Oh, there it is. Oh, goodness, it came up. Okay, we have success. So this comes from News Nation and it is from June 8th of 2023. It says family praise for closure in case of missing mother. Uh, Ebony Giddens disappeared in Georgia in March of 2018. Her then boyfriend has been jailed for stalking and assault. And her uh, her family hopes for closure. Get rid of ads um, for her three year three young sons. Oh, stop. I'm in Georgia. The Giddens family is searching for closure in the case of a young mother who has been missing for five years, leaving three young sons behind. It has been five years since Ebony Giddens last saw her family at a weekend barbecue. The following Monday, the young mother of three had vanished without a trace. <sighs> Swatting ads. Her boyfriend at the time now sits in jail, but police have no suspects in her disappearance. Still, her family continues to search, hoping for finding closure for themselves and her three young sons. It was a typical spring Monday in March of 2018 when Ebony Giddens' brother, Alvin Giddens, knocked on her door in Columbus, Georgia, to pick her sons up to take them to school. It was part of their normal routine, normal routine, but that day, Ebony did not answer. Ebony's cousin, Ashley Jones, said Alvin knew something was wrong, and Ebony did not answer the door. One of the kids answered the door and said she is not here. Um, he's like, she's not there. What's going on? At that point, we knew something wasn't right because she would never leave her kids by themselves, Jones said. When Alvin went inside the apartment with his five-year-old five year old nephew, um, he found Ebony's purse in the living room. Her wallet and keys were both inside, but Ebony and her phone were gone. The 27-year-old mother of three boys, age nine, five, and two, uh, built her life around her children. As a mom, she would do anything for her boys, anything they wanted, anything she could try to get, she would get for them, Jones said. She was doing the best that she could. Uh, the family had seen Ebony just two days before when they had a weekend cookout. It was a typical Saturday night. The family eating barbecue and playing cards. Ebony loved spades, deuces, and dominoes. Nobody knew it was the last time they would see her. Jones said her favorite moments were at those gatherings, laughing and joking around, Ebony pretending that she knew what she was doing, even if she didn't. Um, but Ebony had a secret she was keeping from her family. Uh, the man she was dating, Malcolm Jackson, was abusive and sometimes he frightened her. Uh, just a day earlier, she had called police after he put a, a uh, firearm to your head during a fight. Most things uh, she would keep to herself because she would know how my family would react to them, Jones said. Police arrested Jackson and locked him up. Ebony filed a restraining order, but he was back home the same day, calling her over and over again in violation of the order. Ebony's aunt, Patricia Giddens, said the family found out some of the things Ebony wasn't telling them after she disappeared. Um, he was abusing her, Patricia said. He would leave her in the middle of the street somewhere and she would have to try to get home by herself. Oh my goodness. A police family and friends conducted searches around the town, a city of about 200,000 people. They searched the neighborhood where Ebony was last seen and also went looking for her in wooded areas near her apartment. They checked uh, neighboring towns where Jackson had left her on the road during arguments. Many people searching for the quiet, loving mother who had suddenly vanished. Uh, Jackson was out of jail. He was out of jail when Ebony disappeared. Miss Marion was here. She'd have a red flag um, up there in the chat. 
but he was later jailed again on charges of aggravated stalking and violation of probation. A year later, he was found guilty of assault, a possession of a firearm, and stalking Ebony. He was sentenced to 35 years in prison on those charges, but faced no charges related to Ebony's disappearance. While the family was searching for Ebony, they said uh, they were also the targets of extortion and online threats. Uh, they said they now rely on hope and faith as they continue to seek answers. Um, overall, we try to give it to God and let him handle it because at this point we can't handle it. It's a lot, Jones said. Patricia said while they hope to find Ebony alive, even finding a body would provide some measure of closure for her loved ones. We just keep praying and hoping. We mainly want closure to give the kids some closure of what happened to her, Patricia said. These kids, they're constantly going and knowing that they had a mother and one day they didn't have her, but we do not know what happened. Oh, that's such a gut-wrenching story. So, yeah, um, once again, in my opinion, the uh, boyfriend is right up there at the uh, oh, top of the list. I mean, she got a restraining order against him, and as soon as he got out, he was violating it. it just, these DV situations are... Mm. I'm going to go back. Uh, you call up in comments. Absolutely. Um, Mitzi says, I can't imagine what absolute uh, hell it would be to not know what happened to a loved one. I would literally be a crazy person. Such strength these families have. Absolutely. Yep. Just as uh, Miss Barbara and uh, Miss Marion. I don't think Miss, I haven't seen Miss Marion in here tonight, but yeah, with uh, Timmy. Timmy D's with his case. At least they were uh, finally able to find um, Timmy uh, and bring him home and lay him to rest. But yeah, it's just heartbreaking. Oh, Miss Peggy says she was knitting and lurking. That's fine. You can lurk. I like it. I like the lurkers. Lurkers are welcome. Yeah, Miss Terry said, um, the not knowing must be so much worse than we could imagine. Our minds tend to go to the worst case scenario, uh, scenario, praise, prayers uh, for comfort for all. Absolutely. Here's Marissa. Hey, Marissa. Welcome. Welcome, my dear. Good to have you here. Always good to have Marissa from uh, Australia, if I'm correct. It's been a while since I've seen you. I was wondering about you. No, oh, thank you, Mitzi. Uh, thank you for the compassionate hard work you do. It matters, it makes a difference. It's not just me. It's uh, it's uh, all of us creators. Um, Mind of Monsters, Arctic Fox, uh, Mr. Steve at True Crime Web, all the other good ones. Um, I know I'm leaving, probably leaving some out. Um, the community, you guys who watch our videos and live streams and uh, share this information out, um, the family members like Miss Barb, um, it takes everybody. It takes a village. Um, Sunshine is always saying that. Mind the monsters. It takes a village. Yeah, thank you, Miranda. Yeah, please, if y'all don't mind, please hit the like button. It does help uh, help this information reach uh, as many people as possible. Comments jumped up on me all of a sudden. Uh, Marissa is probably my swamp connection. <laughs> my swamp connection has been extra swampy tonight. It's been horrible. I have not been able to get. It's been taking uh, forever for my just to load articles to read, and it, it's been horrible. So it's probably my swamp connection. I apologize. Hopefully Saturday it'll Saturday night it'll be better. Yeah, Missy got it. My, Missy said swamp. Yep. My country connection. 
my boonies, although I only live like, I mean, I don't live out in the sticks and the boonies. I only live like five minutes from, from town, which is a town of less than 2000, a wide place in the road, basically, but along the interstate. But, uh, yeah, our lack of cell towers and, uh, Verizon, I have Verizon cell service and it's not always uh, the best, but absolutely. Uh, Miranda says prayers for crime victims' families. Absolutely, ma'am. That's all right, dear. Miranda says she's been busy, but she, uh, she tries and watches when she can. It's absolutely. You can always will be a replay crew. I live my replay crew too. Absolutely. Uh, Miss Barbara says you have to hold on to God to have the strength to keep fighting. Absolutely. Well said, Miss Barb. Uh oh. Rissa says that Australia has shocking internet. I don't know if that's good or bad. All right, I'm caught up in comments. I think we have once again, uh, if I can get the article come up let me see what it is i don't know i may save that last one i think i'm going to save the how far are we in we'll see how long it takes if if it takes this article uh, a year to load then i'll save it for saturday night uh <laughs> because my voice is about to give on me tonight i hadn't intended to be on here this long but with my swamp signal it uh but hey, we got 10 people here now. The later it gets, the more people I get in here. I love my late night crew. Oh, Marissa says uh, it's bad, really bad. I can relate. My my boonies signal out here, my swamp signal is uh, very bad. Oh, my goodness, it came up. Hallelujah. Okay, so this is... Uh, Ariana Fitz. I found this. Um, I don't. I think uh, once again another one that just popped up. Uh, either when I was searching on my laptop or somehow. Um, but this is little. Uh, is actually, and I don't think it has a picture of her mom. I may bring it to screen share the um, if it'll let me screen share the article. I think it has a picture of the mom. So both Ariana and her mom went missing. The mom, unfortunately, was found deceased. Ariana has not been found. Uh, they both went missing on uh, February 1st, 2016 in Oakland, California. Um, Ariana says we should now be eight. So she was just like a baby. Um, didn't give her, doesn't give her age. I'm sure it will in the article. Um, she was a, a black female, uh, black hair, brown eyes. Um, uh, when she was last seen, she was two foot tall, two foot tall, 48, uh, 45 pounds. Um, the picture there on the right, on the right is age progressed to six. Um, she was last seen in February of 2016. It says the missing date is an approximation. So if you have any information on Ariana or her mother, Please call 1-800-843-5678, which is 1-800-THE-LOST, or the San Francisco Police uh, Department at uh, 415-553-0123. All right, go back over here and screen share. I think it does have some different pictures. If it'll come up. Give it a second. There it is. Wow. All right. And this is from sfgate.com. A uh, mother was found buried in the San Francisco park. And it says her daughter, uh, little Ariana, may still be alive. This is from April of 2023. It says the tragedy of Nicole and Ariana Fitz is one of the most frustrating unsolved cases in San Francisco. And there is that beautiful little baby. There's pictures of Ariana. Oh, that sweet little face just breaks my heart. 
here. All right, so around 10.30 a.m. on April 8th, 2016, a San Francisco parks worker, parks worker stumbled onto an unusual looking piece of plywood atop a brushy overgrown area in McLaren Park. They pushed the wood aside and there, curled into the fetal position, was a woman's body and she was deceased. Seven years later, that woman's young daughter is still missing but family and police strongly believe that she is still alive out there somewhere. The tragedy of Nicole and Ariana Fitz is one of San Francisco's most frust frustrating unsolved cases. And Nicole Fitz was 32 when she was killed. Her life had been a hard one marked by poverty and struggle. She worked relentlessly to make ends meet for her two daughters, but high uh, Bay Area rents forced her to send her oldest to live with the girl's father in Southern California. Nicole and Ariana, just two and a half years old, uh, bounced from home to home. And sometime before Nicole's life was taken, uh, they ended up briefly in a homeless shelter. And um, there, Nicole's family says she met a so-called street pastor named uh, Limassani Briggs. And Nicole and Ariana moved in with her, but the relationship qu quickly soured. Um, Nicole's loved ones have alleged uh, that Briggs was emotionally um, abusive and controlling. Uh, the Fitz left Briggs' home and found shelter with relatives in Santa Cruz, but that meant hours of driving to and from San Francisco, where Nicole had a job at the Harrison Street uh, Best Buy. Uh, to cut down on commuti commuting, she sometimes couch surfed with friends. Ariana would stay for days at a time with her new babysitters, Helena, Helena and Devin Martin, at their home on Castro Street in Oakland. Uh, Nicole met the Martins through Briggs. Helena was Briggs's niece. Try to keep up here. This is kind of confusing. And when worried family members asked Nicole if she was concerned about still having ties to Briggs, she allegedly reassured them that Helena wasn't close to her aunt. It's not clear if Nicole knew that Helena that once knew that Helena had once been charged with homicide in 2001. She was then known as Helena Hearn. The 18-year-old uh, was accused of fatally uh, GSW, uh, the father of one of her children, and she reportedly served six years for that crime. On April 1st, 2016, Nicole worked her usual shift at Best Buy and headed out for the day. Later that evening, she texted a family member with the news that she was going to Fresno with someone named Sam. They thought this was odd. She didn't know any Sams and she also didn't have her own car. Shortly after 1 a.m., an even stranger post went up on Nicole's Facebook page that said, quote, spending time with my three-year-old and uh, need this break. Loved ones believe this was not posted by Nicole and because she rarely made spelling mistakes and more uh, glaringly, Ariana was not yet three years old. By April 5th, it was clear something wasn't right. Nicole wasn't responding to calls and she hadn't shown up to work. Her family reported her and Ariana missing. When they did so, they noted to police that they had not seen Ariana in person since mid-February. San Francisco police detectives quickly uh, honed in on Helena and uh, Devin Martin. A police commander told reporters they believe Nicole was trying and failing to bring Ariana home at the time of her disappearance. Although the Martins uh, cooperated initially, SFPD said they gave, quote, inconsistent, conflicting statements and soon stopped helping altogether. Was again, if Miss Miriam was here, she'd have her red flags up in chat. And Nicole Fitz received a phone call on April 1st, 2016 at approximately 9 p.m. Uh, the SFPD said in a missing in a missing poster that call lured Nicole out of her residence to, quote, go meet the babysitter. And Nicole was never seen alive again. A week after that phone call, Nicole's body was discovered near the uh, Louis Sutter playground. 
Uh, the plywood plank covering her body didn't match anything in the area, so police believe the offender or offenders brought it with them to hide the remains. It is It has distinctive gray spray paint on it, although the pattern could just be from construction markings. Uh, she was cheerful and pleasant to be around, always just giving to people. A uh, sister, Contessa Fitz, said shortly after Nicole's passing. She always made sure whoever she was around was taken care of. She was a bubbly, she was bubbly and a really good person. Ariana, now nine years old, has yet to resurface, although police believe someone out there may be raising her. My bed is on the uh, babysitters. Says we do not have any evidence that shows that Ariana's status is anything but alive. An SFPD spokesperson spokesperson told SFGate on Wednesday. Uh, Briggs passed away after uh, falling ill uh, with COVID in December 2021. Uh, the Martins are believed to have moved to Las Vegas, where billboards displaying Ariana's face went up last year. And there is an age progression of a little Ariana to age nine. Sweet little face. Um, age progress photos of, of Ariana have been made by the National Center for Missing and Exported Children. In them, as she did at two and a half, Ariana has a wide, welcoming smile. Family members say she is bright and curious and loved lollipops as a toddler. At this time, we do not have updates to release regarding this case. SFPD told SFGate over email, due to the open investigation, we're not confirming any person who may be a person of interest or a suspect. A missing person investigation for Ariana Fitz remains an open investigation. Anyone with information is asked to contact SFPD's tip line at 415-575-4444. Or text um, their um, tip to tip 41. I'm starting that text with SFPD and tips can be left anonymously. So that, let me get her. Uh, get her a uh, picture back uh, up there. This little Ariana. Oh, this breaks my heart, but hopefully um like they said the sfpd has hope or thinks that she still could be alive possibly uh with these babysitters um helena and uh devon i forgot the last name all the articles i used um are linked in the description section so feel free to uh, go and read them and check them out share them out um if you don't want to share this video I have all the links to all the articles um, I read from tonight. You can share them out individually, copy and paste, share them everywhere, anywhere and everywhere you can. All right, let me get caught up in comments. I think that is the last one I had for the night. Yeah, Miranda says, um, I worry for Sebastian's father, Seth. It seems extremely traumatized. Yeah, to me, all the all the family, all the parents seem uh, traumatized. Yeah, it's just a all around difficult situation. Absolutely. Miss Barbara says it's traumatic to not have answers. Absolutely, ma'am. Hey, Joss. There's Jocelyn. Hey, everyone. I'm late. That's okay. All you would have been, uh, all you missed really, except, well, the important information, but my swamp signal has uh, been running extra, extra slow tonight. So it's mostly uh, me, you know, sit, uh, us sitting around waiting for uh, my article to come up that I'm going to read. But they eventually come up, so we're not doing bad. It's good to have you here, Josh. Josh. Jocelyn. I knew a Jocelyn in school, and, and we her nickname, we called her Josh. I know, dude. I'm fixing my cat's down here griping at me to get out of his chair. Absolutely. Miss Terry said uh, those babysitters were very suspicious. I don't understand the motives, but it has never uh, looked good. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, Mitzi said, what a doll. Absolutely. 
Yeah, Miranda says it's so sad that the, the delay in reporting them missing. Yes, ma'am. All right, let me make sure. Yep, that's the last one I had. So uh, he's gone again. Yeah. Anyway, my cat. Yeah, I love him. True crime, true crime tigger. That's what I named him. I don't know if you guys saw a, couple, a few days ago. I the night we had one of the night, the day after one of the nights. So we had storms all night. And we were all up all night. And uh, that next day, he was just passed out on my bed on me all day. And I think I took a picture and put it on my community page that a true, true crime tigger had to get caught up on his uh, beauty sleep. But anyway, um, that's all I had. So while well, I do some a little bit of shameless plugging, you guys can start uh, any other questions, comments, uh, goodbyes, whatever you guys want to start putting in. And then I'll get do a little bit of shameless plugging and then I'll get to uh, everybody's last comments. Uh, thank you, everybody who was here in chat tonight. Um, it'll be impossible for me to go through all. And But everybody that was here, I appreciate you being here. Everybody who's watching on replay, thank you so much. Don't forget to, uh, if you're watching replay or still here in chat, give it a thumbs up before you leave. If you uh, if it's your first time here and, and uh, this sounds like your cup of tea, if you found this information informative, interesting, uh, please consider subscribing. Like, share, comments. The most important thing you can do is share, share, share to get all this information out to as many people as possible about the missing and these cold cases. Um, if you ever have any questions or comments, or if you have a case um, that you would like me to uh, share, you can uh, email me at the email address below. If you have a case, um, give me the victim's name, the town or city town or state it happened in any information you may have i will do my best uh, to research it and share it um somehow some way whether it be a, a case of the week and my missing persons or any way i can share it bring attention to it i will be more than happy to do it uh, you can find me on uh, facebook also obviously at southern gal True crime i have a group and a page the group is more active i do post all the missing persons in there um usually all the articles that i use in um my lives or videos plus articles that i don't post here um the page i put a little bit of stuff on the page but i've been devoting more time to the group than the page so please do join the group it is free and it is a private group so nobody outside the group can see um who is in the group or who or what you post so it's safe um if you would like to help uh, support the channel and the awareness for the missing and cold cases, all my donation links can be found in the description box and also in the about section of my page. All right. I think that is all my, I'll put that back up there. All my shameless plugging and get to comments and goodbyes and get out of here for the night. Maybe my voice, will, maybe my voice and my swap signal will recover by Saturday night. So. Uh, let's see. Absolutely, Miss Barbara. Miss Barbara says, thank you for everything you do for families. All of you are important to the families. Thank you, ma'am. And the families are important to us. Um, it is, it is, I don't want to speak for the other creators here, but I'm sure they feel the same way. It is my honor, um, to be able to, uh, share, um, family members, anybody, you know, family members, uh, stories loved ones it's an always always an honor to have the family members here like you miss barbara miss marion miss kimberly lots um any other family members that have come in here that i don't you know that i don't know about uh, thank you miss peggy miss peggy said take care stay safe everyone absolutely miss peggy you also thank you jocelyn says have a great night everyone you too ma'am I'm sorry you made it late, but you can watch, you can be replay crew. Yeah, that Missy, yeah, that was a awful, awful sad story. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Miss Marissa. Thank you, uh, thank you, everybody who watches. We would not be able to do what we do if uh, nobody would, you know, come to sit here and listen to me for what over three hours now, um, and have so much patience uh, with the. Uh, my technical difficulties 
Thank you, Miss Barbara. It says good night, all of you, all for your hard work. We love you too, Miss Barbara. You know, I love you. Um, you, Miss Marion, and the family are always in my thoughts and prayers, always. Thank you, Mitzi. It says have a good week, everyone. Stay safe. Good night. You too, Mitzi. All right, guys. Uh, let me get my outro going here. Right. Um, thank you. Like I said, um, tomorrow I will have at some point I will have my um, missing person Monday video uploaded. I was going to uh, record it tonight, but I'll probably get up early and record it in the morning and get it uploaded sometime tomorrow afternoon. Um, I don't know if I have anything Wednesday, Friday. I'll either have a live stream or a video for the case of the week. Saturday, we'll probably do a true crime after dark. So that should be the schedule, tentative schedule. All right. So uh, thank you everybody for being here um, in the chat, watching replay. Um, I love you all and I will see you next time. Bye.